Obviously, we have breaking news. Biden has touched down in Kiev. So we're going to talk about that, which is just really just bad news. I mean, you know, give me a break. We'll get into all of that and take your calls. This just happened on my way in to the radio station is when this broke. Here we go. Yes, yes. Welcome to the program, everyone. My name is Brian Craig. This is the Steve Kane Radio Show, Florida's longest-running radio show on the radio since 1977. My name is, of course, Brian, and we've got big news today. It's President's Day, so, of course, we want to wish the greatest president ever, Donald Trump, a happy President's Day. But we got some breaking news that broke about an hour ago, broke as I was driving into the radio station this morning, that Biden has touched down in Kiev. I refuse to say Kiev, all right? We've been calling it Kiev for as long as I can remember. And then a year ago, all of a sudden it was Kiev. Um, yeah, so Biden is, is in Ukraine meeting with Zelensky. Won't go to Ohio. We have Americans that have been poisoned. And this poisoning in Ohio could go on for generations. Can't be bothered to go there, but goes to Ukraine where he's pledged to give Zelensky another one half of a billion dollars in aid on top of the quadrillion dollars we've already given him. I guess there's not a lot of aid to go around after the train derailment in uh, Palestine, Ohio. Oh my goodness. You know, they, 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 you know, there's a, there's a big question here with the Biden regime. And this is a serious, serious question. Do they just not care what we think? Or um are they out of touch with reality as to where the pulse of the American people are? Hmm? I don't know. Um, it, that's, a, that's, a tough, that's a tough call. But I do know this, that the give peace a chance crowd are now a bunch of warmongers on the left. This war has been going on for a year. You know, this war, I call it the Cold War II. I've been talking about this since, you know, for a year. and. And I feel a little alone on this, especially I, I turn on Fox News this morning to get the latest on Biden's scam over there in Ukraine. And they are like, you know, war fever over there on Fox News Channel. It's like the days of the WMD lie to the world that got us into the war in Iraq, right? But here's here's the thing. Here's the thing. And this is... This is just the reality of it, okay? We just got out a year ago of a 20-year-long war in Afghanistan. That's boatloads of money. And, you know, when we pulled out and we were getting all this information about what we did to the country, Afghanistan, so far as rebuilding it, it's amazing. You know, when we first invaded Afghanistan, their number one business, they were in the import business of, of heroin. Remember? They were, that's where all the heroin was grown. That was their number one industry in Afghanistan. And they were basically back in medieval times. We didn't rebuild a country because there was nothing to build. We built a nation, gave them modern everything. I'm not going to go through a list. You, you guys know. Um, did this geological survey and found out that the largest um, uh, supply in the world of the necessary minerals to make the batteries for the electric cars is in Afghanistan. And we just gave this country back to the people that knocked down the buildings. And by the way, we gave them a whole military apparatus we left behind too. So we end a 20 year war. And about a week later, this Ukraine Russian war begins. The largest ground war in Europe since the Second World War. How many times are you going to hear that today? I've heard it at least twice already. Um, 
do any of you find that odd? Do any of you find that suspicious? Do any of you question that? We get out of a 20-year war and boom, we're in another one. You know, I am an anti-war guy. I was not always that way. I, you know, I, not that I was pro-war, but, but I did not know that George Bush and Dick Cheney were lying war criminals in Colin Powell. I did not know that. I know the liberals said they were in broken clock. They were right, but now they're, they're warmongers. And they got us involved in a conflict that I, I believed. I didn't believe that the government was so corrupt that they would get involved in a war where millions of people's of, uh, lives have been destroyed. I don't know how many lives were destroyed by Bush and Cheney in Afghanistan and Iraq. Yeah, I have no idea. But it was a lot. And I, you know, I didn't realize that at the time. I didn't realize how corrupt this, this government is, our country is, our politicians are, the donors, the military industrial, all that. Now I know. And you know what? You guys know too, don't you? This war in Ukraine, there's a lot of things about it that I really, truly question. Okay. Um. Where, where's all the footage of the front lines? I talk a lot. I, I watch YouTube, uh, YouTubers in Ukraine and life seems to be normal. My favorite is, is, is uh, Pavlo in Ukraine. He's like 25 years old and uh, just hangs out all day making vlogs on YouTube, kind of like I do, <laughs> right? I don't see him signing up. You know, I, I, I watch this, this, uh, footage out of Kiev. Kiev looks like a pretty normal city. You know, they're going to tell you about 5,000 times how dangerous this is for Biden. The air raid sirens, the, the air raid sirens were, were blaring when Biden was on the ground. Well, um, was there an air raid or did they, did they just turn the sirens on? Where's the air raid? Come on. Do you really think that Putin is so stupid that he would conduct an air raid on Kiev while the president of the United States is there. Are you kidding me? They turned the sirens on. There was no air raid. I tell you guys, don't do this till after nine o'clock. Don't do this while I'm on the air. But go check out Pavlo in Ukraine on YouTube. I'm going to go through his channel during the break, and I'm going to go through some of his videos. My goodness. Where's the war? Why do we not have embedded journalists? Remember uh, in, in the war in Iraq and in Afghanistan, we had embedded journalists with frontline combat units. Where are the embedded journalists in this Ukraine-Russian war? I find that odd. I know that there's, there's been fighting. I know buildings have been knocked down. I'm not a fool. But where's, where are the embedded journalists on the front lines? Why do they not have embedded journalist on the front lines of, of, of this war? What are they not showing us? You know, if they want public opinion in the United States to be in favor of fighting Russia, which I don't believe that it is, okay, why not show us the carnage, the war crimes of the Russians on the front lines? I know they talk about it. They reference it. I see interviews with people but I don't actually see them there. There's a reason why, people. There's something there they don't want us to see. Or maybe there's not as much frontline fighting as they want us to believe. I want to hear your thoughts on all of this, okay? Biden in Ukraine. one go Kane one It's a toll-free call no matter where you're calling from. one 465 2631. There's lots of questions about this. We just scratched the surface. We're going to go through this. There's a lot of other things we're going to talk about on the program today, but we're going to start with Biden's trip to wag the dog Ukraine. This is about the military industrial complex donors that have complete control of our government. And Fox News is rah, 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 go to war. The media, don't trust the media. They love wars. Wars mean viewers. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And why are all the Fox News reporters always holed up in hotels? Why are none of them out on the front lines? There were Fox News reporters on the front lines in Afghanistan and Iraq, but not here. Why is that?
All right. We're going to take our first break of the week. It's the Steve Kane Show. It's Monday morning. I'm Brian Craig. Back after this. Oh, man. I know. I'm telling you guys, something is rotten here. Something is not right not having embedded uh, journalist. What it is, I don't know. But something is not right. Something is not right not having embedded uh, journalist. By the way, I got a new microphone. I just got over the weekend a wireless mic that I'm using. So uh, <clears throat> seems to be working pretty good. That's why I was just turning up the volume on myself. I did some testing over the weekend. I just got this microphone yesterday. I did not have it for my uh, my vlogging over the weekend, but uh, just got it yesterday. I get tired of the wire. So we'll see. I don't know if the battery is long enough to last during the uh, show. You know, three hours. Yeah, it does sound good. And, you know, what's crazy about it is I can walk far away. Watch. I'm going to go in the other room. Okay. Like you guys can hear me. I'm out in the hallway. I'm not even in the studio now, and you can hear me. I'm in another room right now, and you can hear me. It's crazy. I have to remember to take it off if I go to the men's room or something, or you'll hear everything. But, yeah, it's crazy. It's got about a 30-foot range. Pretty crazy, huh? I know. But uh, like I said, I don't know if the battery is long enough to last for the whole three hours. I might have to just use it to vlog. I'll find out. Yeah, it's, it's you know, one less wire that I've got all over the place. <clears throat> oh, man. By the way, guys, if you want to um, support my content, become a Patreon supporter. There's a link in the description and patreon supporters there's all kinds of benefits our top patreon supporters have their names listed in the episode descriptions both uh, on on youtube on my podcast and you and uh, top patreon supporters get shout outs on all my podcast episodes too but my patreon link is in the uh, description of the video become a patreon supporter you get uh patreon supporters um, have access to uh commercial free editions of my podcast too. Yes, Rome. Thank you. Rome's a Patreon supporter. She's a top Patreon supporter. So you guys that are top Patreon supporters, look in the description. You'll see your name listed in the um, video description. <clears throat> Every line on the board is lit. So. I left my coffee cup. There we go. Oh, they put ceiling tiles in the ceiling over the weekend. New ceiling tiles. I didn't even notice that. Here we go. Indeed it is. Every line on our board is lit, so call us on hold. Stand by. one go cane one is the number. 888-465-2631. You know, I got to tell you guys about Forever Youth. You know, any lab test now of Boca and any lab test now of Coral Springs, where I go for all of my lab testing, and they have the guaranteed lowest price on all of their thousands of lab testings, in and out in less than 15 minutes. My wife goes there for her testing. <clears throat> it's much faster and more convenient than going to your doctor. But they've expanded, and right next door to any lab test now, of Boca in the Sandalfoot Plaza, where the Western Beef is, they've expanded into Forever Youth. And during the month of February, they have some specials going on that are amazing specials that I want to tell you about. Huge deals. Now, these are their Valentine's Day specials, but for Steve Kane Show listeners, they're running these for the entire month of February. And we're getting, you know, the month, you know, it's the shortest month of the year, and we're getting close. Uh, 20% off of any filler, like Botox and Juvederm, 20% off. Um, IV therapy, which I've had and is amazing. Uh, it's great for dehydration, but there's other IV therapies too. Buy one, get one free. 50% off their laser hair removal. And this one's huge. 50% off their Cool Sculpting Elite. One of Steve's daughters had the Cool Sculpting Elite done. It's FDA approved. It does everything liposuction does 
without that procedure. It's not invasive. It's not a surgical procedure. It freezes the fat away on any part of your body where you have fat, the stomach, the love handles, back of the arms, the neck, your back, your legs, wherever you have fat on your body, the cool sculpting elite will freeze that fat away. And then they sculpt that part of the body so that it looks like the way you want it to look. 50% off. But you've got to mention you heard about them on the radio. Is that a good deal? Forever Youth is located right next to any lab test now of Boca and the Sandalfoot Plaza where the Western Beef is. You can give them a call, 561-717-8081, 561-717-8081, and online, foreveryouthboca.com. That's foreveryouthboca.com. All right, if you're just tuning in, Biden... Uh, he grabbed the checkbook, got on Air Force One, and went to Ukraine, and he's writing a check for half a billion dollars to Zelensky on top of all the other money he's given Zelensky. Wonderful. If you're in Pristine, Ohio, you're on your own. But if you're in, uh, if there's a train derailment in Ukraine, Biden's right there. All right. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? This is Mike from Louisiana. Hey, what's up? Oh, man. I the big question is, if that has happened, if, that, if they blared those sirens, the Jerry sirens, did, would he have done, oh man, I, the big question is, if that has happened, yeah, I mean, that, that, that's basically, this is, this is Joe Biden we're talking about here, and he takes his checkbook to go over there, oh, we're going to give you another half a billion dollars. On, 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 on top of the quadrillion we've already given them. You know, and, you know, this is um, this is an interesting thing here, you know, because, you know, President Trump's going to Ohio this weekend to visit with the community and, and look over the the damaged area here. He is over in Ukraine. I don't believe there was an air raid. I think they just turned on the sirens for effect and for the media. What do you think? I think so, too. And that's, that's the thing. That, that, that sounds like something Putin would do or Zelensky would do. Turn on those sirens just for effect, you know, just to make sure. And when you mentioned the military industrial complex, man, that takes me back to that speech that uh, President Eisenhower made, made at the end of his time in office, you know. Yeah. Yeah, it's, you know, you guys um, go and look this up online after I'm off the air. Don't do it now. But it's it's President Eisenhower's farewell speech. And he went into great detail about, he you know, and what he talked about was, you know, this is Eisenhower, how for the first time in history, we have a whole sector of the economy that's based around war. Right. And that never, you know, usually we would just arm up when wars happen. Now, now we have to have a continuous war to feed this industry. You know, out of the $500 billion, half a, uh, that's what it was, half, I, I think I misspoke, it's more, it's half a trillion. I, th I think I said half a billion. No, it's half, a, uh, it's half a trillion dollars, I think, 500 billion with a B. How much of that, I wonder, is really going to Ukraine? Well, it may be going to Ukraine, but it's gonna make its way back to, uh, Biden and the rest of them, you know, the rest of the corruption that is in Washington, D.C., you know that's going to happen, right? Oh, oh, it's going to go to Ukraine, but it's going to be siphoned back to, uh, you know, Washington. Yeah, yeah, it's, I, I misspoke at the top. It's half a trillion, 500 billion with a B. I'm a little behind on my caffeine this morning, guys. Bear with me, but I'll, but I'll tell you, um, you know, the, the American people are not behind this war at all. We know what it is. Why, why do you think we're not seeing any reporters embedded with the frontline Ukrainian army fighting off the mad Russians? That's right. And, and by the way, I have been to Pablo's, uh, Pablo from Ukraine's site. And I've seen his videos. You're right. I mean, he's going around all these miles and different places. And it's not like, it's not like there's a war going on. I, I know. You know, Pavlo in Ukraine, I give this guy more publicity than anyone. And I'm always talking about his YouTube channel. Pavlo in Ukraine's in his mid-20s. He's got this um, bikini girlfriend that he puts in all of his thumbnails, even though she's not in the video. They're clickbaity. 
and um, he lives with grandma. And he makes these, vi I'm going through his videos right now. Um, he's, here's one video, his beloved German Shepherd passed away. Here he is on vacation at a resort at the Black Sea. Um, here he is going to the beach with his bikini girlfriend. You know, um, you know, here he is riding a motorcycle around town, riding a bicycle around town. You know, wh why isn't he in the army? Where wh and what about these these Russian rape gangs? Is he not concerned that they're going to go after his? He doesn't seem worried about the Russian rape gangs that I keep hearing about. Absolutely, you know, and that's the thing. He doesn't seem to be. You guys like about, a new wireless uh, mic? By the way, I, I just over the weekend I received my My Pillow 2.0s. Oh, have you slept on them yet? I love them, man. I love them. You know the My Pillow 2.0 with the cooling technology inside. Who would have thought that Mike Lindell would have been able to improve the perfect My Pillow? But he did it. He he did it. Now I have like five or six My Pillows, you know, and so. I love, I love them all. I love my pillow. I love my all of my pillow products I have. Yeah, you know the uh, the my the my pillow two point is buy one get one free at mypillow.com with our promo code Kane at checkout K A N E. But remember, I'm telling you guys, I got the inside info on this. The my pillow two point is selling far and above their projections, and when they start to run low on inventory, they're going to end the bogo offer. So take advantage of that buy one get one free while you can. With the promo code Kane, K A N E, at checkout. That's great. Well, thanks, Mike and Louisiana. I appreciate that. Yeah, I live in a My Pillow household too. In fact, I uh, I probably have more My Pillow products in my home than even the great Mike Lindell. I have that many. So use our promo code at checkout. That My Pillow 2.0 with the cooling technology is amazing. You can also order by phone. And remember, you can take advantage of all the specials at mypillow.com with our promo code Kane, K A N E, not just the ones I talk about. Uh, their number, if you want to order by phone, toll free, 1-800-716-4879. 1-800-716-4879. That's 1-800-716-4879. Promo code Kane, K-A-N-E. There's one opening on the board where Mike from Louisiana was. If you're on hold, stand by. We'll be back with more of your calls after our bottom of the hour break. Stay tuned. Making morning radio great again. Yeah, I feel... I, with this wireless mic, I feel like naked because I don't, you know, because what I was using before was uh, a USB mic that, you, you know, a clip on mic that plugged in. I still have it. See, this just plugged into the my iPhone and I would have this wire, you know, so now I feel kind of I feel kind of naked because I don't have the I don't have the uh, the wire. But uh, the main reason I got the mic, the, the wires a little bit, was for my vlogging. Because my vlogging mic, just this mic for vlogging, I have another one of these at home, just hasn't been working too well. So, and this mic, I can't believe how cheap I got this mic. You know, I, they, I wanted to get one of those road mics like this, and they're $300. I'm like, that's, I'm not, I don't know about that, $300. I got this one for 30 bucks and I got it delivered the same day. I mean, I ordered it on Amazon um, yesterday morning and I had it by one in the afternoon. It's crazy. So if it works well and last, um, I'll be happy. I just don't know if it'll last three hours. We'll find out. Just, just got to remember to take it off the wireless mic when I go to the men's room. The other one I had to take off because I had a wire. So, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Oh, man. What a crazy weekend, I must tell you. I hope you guys enjoyed my videos from over the weekend. Let me hear yes, yes, yes. Oh, man. What a crazy weekend, I must tell you.
I hope you guys enjoy it. It does sound good. I mean, can the do, do you really think the $300 Rode mic could possibly sound any better than this $30 mic? And by the way, that was with the same day shipping, the $30. Yeah, let me go in the other room. Let me see if it works through the glass. Let me walk over here. Let me see. I'm in the hallway now. So I got this new wireless mic so I can walk around when I'm streaming. I just, yeah, I just, I just have to remember to take it off if I go to the men's room. <laughs> yeah, well, that would be the best idea. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> That'd be awful. But I just want to see if they can hear it. Let me go back in and see if they could hear it. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Could you guys hear me in there with Mike? Isn't that crazy? Yeah, I know. It's nuts, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. If it doesn't last the whole time, I can turn it off during breaks if I don't want to talk. I've walked 30 feet and it was working. It's supposed to have 50 feet. I haven't gone quite 50 feet. 50 feet's kind of far. <clears throat> but um, yeah, who was that um, That killer, that millionaire killer they made the HBO documentary about? He left his mic on during a deposition and went to the men's room and confessed. Oh, man. I saw, oh, what was his name? I cannot remember his name. Well, I decided to get the, I, I did not know. I looked at wireless mics a long time ago, but the only one they had was that Rode $300 mic. And I wanted to get it like a year ago. And then I was having, pro I've been having problems with my, um, yeah, Durst. It was Durst, yeah. Um, the guy that confessed in the bathroom, he forgot he had his mic on. Um, I was having problems vlogging the last couple times I vlogged with my old mic. So I said, well, let me go online and see. And I saw these mics. There's a lot of mics in this price point. And I'm like, I don't know. I said, 30 bucks. If it doesn't work, I'll just send it back and go, you know, and I got it. And boom, I'm in, I'm in shock at how well this $30 mic works. This blew my mind away. The end result is I'm broke. You know, it was um, $651 for 10 minutes of work by the plumber. But I, I, you know, I can do plumbing, some plumbing and that plumbing and electric are, you know, I don't mess with electric. I've gotten shocked pretty bad a couple of times. I can do some plumbing work, but this was beyond me. So, oh my goodness. Yeah, I, I it, you know, I, I, I was robbed in my home. It felt like a home invasion robbery from the, um, from the plumber. He had to um, use a professional snake for the drain on the outside of the house. And I saw what came out. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, it was awful what came out of the house. It smelled like, oh, death. First time it had been staked that the house was built. It's, the house was built in the 70s. All right. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Brian Craig. It's the Steve Kane Show, Florida's longest running radio show. Every line on the board is lit. We're talking about Biden's money laundering operation, flying to Ukraine, giving Ukraine aid. You know, there's a reason why we don't see embedded troops, I mean, embedded journalists with the troops on the front lines. What are they hiding from us? I'm not even sure there is frontline combat. They want F-16s. Do they know how to fly the F-16s, the Ukrainians? 
All right, one triple eight, go Kane one. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Jeff Lane. Hey, Jeff. Hey, um, I was going to say exactly what that guy said was that last call was this is about money laundering again. Where's a half a trillion dollars going in that country of Ukraine? It's not going to their troops and for weapons and stuff. Why don't we? Um, all the money. How about how about taking? Why can't Biden take some of that money and clean out the uh, the the water in uh, Palestine, Ohio, that has all those chemicals in it that JD Vance was throwing the rock into? You remember that creek the other day? I mean, come on. And I was. That's where I was going next. This this Ukraine thing is distracting from a total environmental hazard that. Nobody has declared an emergency, has gone in there to help anybody. And that's the real story. We're supposed to help Americans first. And this is a close. Well, well, Biden, Biden is helping Americans first, right? Himself, Jill, Hunter, his family, you know, the, the donors, you know, all the politicians that are getting earmarks and kickbacks from all of this funding of, of Ukraine. You know, if with without exaggerating, what percentage of the money that we send to Ukraine do you think actually goes to Ukraine? Ten percent, fifteen percent? Less than ten. Really, you think so? Sure. Less than ten. Mm. This is all about. Well, people don't like to hear it, but the new world order that the Klaus and you know the globalists they want control and. Um, in the past few years, how many chicken farms have um, burned up? The largest ones. And how, how many water places? If he who controls the food and water supply can take over the world. Well, I know um, that I, I, I know that guy over in Europe, uh, Klaus von Bülow, whatever his name is, Charles Schraub, Schraub you know, Klaus von Bülow, you know, I know he wants to control the world. But this, th what's going on in Ukraine is really about people that work in government getting paid. This is just a Joe Biden is just a corrupt public official. That's all. That's what he is. You don't think it, that, that our government, our government has been in sync with some of these clubs of people and um, setting up an I know it's one world. I like in this world. You guys they want it. total control. Well, the reason the reason. <clears throat> well, here's here's the thing, you know, like these these corrupt American politicians like Biden, the reason that they want like globalism is not to have one government controlling all of our lives. It's it's a way for them to steal money from the United States Treasury on a larger scale when they're doing it worldwide, as opposed to just in the United States. You understand what I mean? See how far that goes back, Brian, because I believe it goes back. To the first, to even first. I think it goes. It goes back. It goes back to uh, the Marshall Plan when we rebuilt Europe at the end of the Second World War. That's when. That's when it started. Nineteen forty-five. <clears throat> these people, um, after the end of the World War II, there was a communist party in America, and that was struck down overwhelmingly by good politicians when we had them. And American people saying that'll never happen. So they just changed their name to liberalism, progressive, socialist, socialist, whatever you want to call it, because that's their end game is power and control. Those people don't care about you and me. They don't care about we, the people, the Constitution. They care about themselves. It's been going on for a long time. And President Trump, by golly, exposed every one of them. And they are so flipping out bad about President Trump. I still say to this day, he's not a politician. He's a businessman. And he knows how to run a country as a businessman. And now he's got a, the whole world. Well, you know what it's like? <clears throat> you know, it's like in The Godfather, you know, when he's meeting with the one guy that wants him to get in the drugs. And he's like, well, you've got the judges and the politicians. You know, Biden's one of those guys. They're just corrupt and they're all on the take. I mean, look, Biden is a Biden is a millionaire, I don't know how many times over, but he has a lot of houses, including a beach house and everything. What business was he in? President Trump was in the hospitality industry. He's a builder. He had a huge TV career. We know how Trump made his money. How did Biden become a millionaire many times over? I'll take it a step further, Brian. Why don't we 
investigate everybody in politics and check their bank account before, during, and after they were a politician and give them a, make them give an account for how they... Well, this is going to be... Well, we got a big test coming now. Okay, the other the other Ukraine funding has already been passed with the Democrat House. Okay, we've got a MAGA Congress now. Any new money has to go through the House. So, and and Marjorie Taylor Greene before the election uh, was talking about auditing all of the government funding to Ukraine to find out where it went. And I'd like to. I hope she, I hear her talking about that today. And I hope that Kevin McCarthy and these in this MAGA House of Representatives we have. Uh, stops this this uh, F-16 half a trillion dollars that Biden is pledging on top of everything else we've already said. And don't be confused. I mean, a lot of the money that Pelosi passed probably hasn't been spent yet, That's but that's done. Any new funding has to be passed by the MAGA House of Representatives. So I, I think they'll stand strong against it. I really do. I, I hope so. Can I add one more point to that, Brian? Mm. Not only should they be doing that, why aren't the House Republicans standing up for Ohio and what's going on in there? Where are they talking about this um, toxic environment that Americans are living in and no, nobody's declared a, an emergency of sending help yet? Why aren't they up there screaming out for that yeah. um, town in Ohio? Yeah, I, I agree. It's like old news now, right? You know, it's, it's, it's an, yeah. I can't believe that has been allowed to go on this far without anybody being sent in there to help these poor people. Well, you know, it's it's a it's a Trump town. Uh, you know, seventy percent of them voted for Trump. Uh, you know, I mean, how how much money? I, th I would think about it. How how much money can Biden steal from funding of a cleanup in Palestine, Ohio, as compared to how much money he can get out of? out of Ukraine. Remember, Ukraine, even though they're desperate for money, he's, he, you know, they gave $100 million to that FTX crypto, right? Remember that? Ukraine bought $100 million in FTX crypto, even though they the verge of collapse, begging for money. And look what happened. They gave over 30 million of it to uh, the Democrats to run their midterm election campaign. If, if they're in such bad shape, why are they buying crypto, which is a very risky investment and why aren't we seeing any pictures live pictures of what's going on in ukraine when's the last time they've shown anything live on tv of what supposed this war between russia and ukraine you know if if no and i'm listening to these reporters right that are talking about the, the unexpected trip of biden to kiev and they're like well we were in our hotels and they said we can't leave our hotel in kiev and no internet or anything None of these reporters are on the front line. And if, if they really want to turn American opinion against Russia and in favor of U.S. intervention, they would show us that. Why do you think they're not showing us embedded journalists on the front lines of this war? Why do you think? I don't think there's a big war going on. Yeah. I, I am thinking that too. Very isolated. Mm -hmm. Skirmishes here and there. Yes. Thanks mm -hmm. for what I was looking mm -hmm. All right, Jeff, take care. Thanks for the call, man. Oh, man, one opening on the board where Jeff in Maine was. What do you guys think about that? I, I That's what I think. And I feel very confident of that. Oh, I forgot to ask Jeff, but I'll ask the rest of you guys. The air raid sirens were on that's been all over the news after Biden was in Kiev. Do you think there was really an air raid in Kiev? Or did, or did Zelensky just turn the air raid siren on? Hmm? All right, if you're on hold, stand by. Phone's very busy today. Only one opening on the board where Jeff Remain was at. one 888 one 888-465-2631. 888-465-2631. By the way, if you're, if you're at home uh, and you, or you're at work and you want to listen to us on your uh, Alexa or your Google device, this is how you do it. Alexa, play True Oldies FLA. Alexa, volume six. There you go. I just turned everyone's devices on so you can catch us there. That's right. Same goes for Google Home. All right. Play oldie, uh, play true oldies FLA. Play true oldies FLA, both on Google Home and Alexa. Alexa, play true oldies FLA. Okay. You guys got it. All right. 
We'll take our last break of the first hour and be back with your calls. The cold hard. Oh man. Welcome. If you're new to my channel, subscribe guys and everyone please like the video. Liking the video helps a lot. Oh man, welcome. Mm. Helps a lot. Oh, man. Jeff's calls are always good. Well, I'm glad you liked the Mar-a-Lago video. Did you guys watch my President's Day weekend Mar-a-Lago video? If you haven't, please do. The video is about 12 minutes long, and it took me five hours to make that video. It was, it was an all-day thing, mainly because of the weather. The weather turned. It was supposed to be a beautiful sunny day on Saturday, and it got cold and rainy. And um, I went by uh, uh, Jeffrey Epstein's house, um, Rush Limbaugh's house, um, Howard Stern's house, Dr. Oz. I went to the church where Trump and Melania married. So, uh, yeah, it's right here on my channel. I uploaded it uh, Saturday night. That was Saturday. I made that. went by Trump Force One at the airport. <clears throat> Thank you, Jeff. The church is amazing. Absolutely amazing. Exactly. Exactly. Ah. <clears throat> <sighs> Okay, hold on, guys. That's just the beginning of what you do. All right, that's our last commercial. <clears throat> that church is beautiful. Oh, was the mic not working? Did the mic stop working? All right. Welcome back, everyone. Call us on hold. Stand by. It's the Steve Kane Show, Florida's longest running radio show. You know, real estate in Florida is is hot. You know, I was I was talking to my neighbor yesterday morning, doing some work outside, and we were talking about the high price of all the houses selling on the block. And you know, um, when you list your house in Florida right now, you want to get top dollar. You want to get top dollar. Houses are selling for the highest amount ever. My house is right now selling for, I don't know, four or five times what I paid for it at least. And when you're listing your house and you sell it, you want to sell it for the highest price possible. And the way you do that is get multiple offers and get a bidding war going on. Elena Castro, who is our Steve Kane Show real estate agent, she was introduced to us by Tom Laporta of Laporta Contracting. She has a way, you call her and she'll tell you about it. When you list your home with Elena Castro, I'm going to give you her number. This number rings directly to her cell phone, guys. Okay. Uh, she has a way of getting you multiple offers on your home. It's amazing strategy that she has. It works. She walks Steve and I through it. When you call her, she'll tell you how she can do it. You get those multiple offers, you're going to drive it up even more. So if you're looking to sell, call Elena Castro, list your home with her, 
and uh, she's going to get you multiple offers. She'll walk you through how she does it. She's brilliant. She's been a real estate agent for a long time here in South Florida. She knows South Florida real estate, and she knows how to get you the most for your home. If you're looking to buy, call her too. She'll find you the best deal. She can work both ways on that. She'll get you the best deal too. But if you're looking to list, uh, give her a call, and she's gonna she'll walk you through it too. How she can get you multiple offers on your home. You get that bidding war going on, and boom, you're rich, right? Yeah. Here's her number again. This rings directly to her cell phone. Elena Castro is a licensed real estate agent with Ballastery Real Estate. Her number nine five four four seven eight. 5015 954-478-5015. That's 954-478-5015. Make sure you tell Elena Castro you heard about her on the radio. All right, let's go to the phones. Every line on the board is lit. Good morning. Morning. Yeah, you're on the air. Hey, good morning, Brian. I'm calling from Michigan. Hey, Michigan. What's up? Okay, I wanted to call you this morning to make a public apology to you. I apologize for being rude on your chat in the past few weeks here. And I had to call you and tell you that, Brian. I really appreciate your show. You're a great guy, and I apologize. Well, I, I don't know what you did or how you were rude, but uh, I'll, I'll accept the apology. You know, that's fine. Were you going through something? Well, why were you rude? Were you going through something in your life and just taking it out on our chat room here? Uh, agreeing and disagreeing with you on some of the things, but yes, it's a kind of personal, you know, I really enjoy your show. Personal, personal in your own personal life or like a personal beef with me? Well, I'm my own life too. You know, I got things going. Oh, that, ha you know, that happens sometimes. Hey, listen, sometimes, sometimes things are going on in our lives and you, you got to have that release, right? And you, and you, and it, and it releases in anger. Yeah, I've, I've been there. All right. Well, hey, listen, I appreciate that. Appreciate that. He's been holding on for about 40 minutes for that apology, too. Nice guy. All right. I'll accept that apology. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? I have no idea who he is in the chat. No idea. Hello? Yeah, you're on the air. Yes, you're Vinny from West Palm Beach. Uh, I'm to the air siren with Biden sitting there like he's at Grandpa's story time. I think the CIA would have rushed in and took him to a safe place and panicked. When they heard the siren, so it's, it's all a good pony show. Yeah. Uh, the next thing would be to like smear fake blood on people, and well, I don't think they have to go that far. But you know, the uh, the air raid sirens. Listen, there's no way Putin would launch an air raid on Kiev while the president of the United States is there. There's no way. Right. So I mean, I, I think the whole thing is going to become like in Israel, where we're going to have to take care of that. Her, you know, and Biden's laundering money. And, uh, well, sure. That's what he does for a living. How do you think he affords all these houses? Payoffs. Yeah, yeah exactly. Have a good day. Thanks. All right. Take care. Great calls today, by the way. At one triple eight go came one's our number. You know, also, if, if you watch this, uh, the footage of Zelensky with Biden, right? There's photographs, there's some video. He's uh, Zelensky is still dressed like Fidel Castro. Can't the guy put on a suit? You know, th this is propaganda 101 right out of Fidel Castro's playbook. And remember, Fidel Castro is right out of the playbook of the Soviet Union. And Ukraine was part of the Soviet Union. Right. So it's the same technique. You remember Castro, his whole life wore fatigues. I remember he went to. Was it the UN? Or he went to some meeting in Paris. It might have been a UN meeting, and he wore a suit and tie, and no one had seen him dressed up in a fancy suit and tie before. Remember this, Castro? And the reason that Fidel Castro wore the fatigues all the time is because the revolution was continuing. It was ongoing. And he, um, yeah, that's right. You know, he had promised that when the re revolution was won, they would have free and fair elections in um with multiple parties in Cuba. Well, the revolution's still going on. That's why there's only one political party in Cuba. And he wore the fatigues because we're always the revolution. We're still at war. Zelensky's the same thing. He's got the Castro beard going on and he's got the um, Castro fatigues on. You know, this guy and his fatigues are cleaner than the clothes I'm wearing right now. 
you know, and he wants to give this impression that he's in foxholes somewhere. Let me tell you, he's not. Okay. Couldn't he put on a suit to meet the president of the United States? The air raid sirens, the fatigues, it's all about imaging. All it is. All right. One triple eight go, Kane. One. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hey, this is Lucky from Fort Lauderdale. Hey, Lucky. Yeah, my problem is the big picture. Look at the big picture. What they're trying to do is bankrupt the country. Oh, no. What they're trying to do is make themselves rich. They may bankrupt the country in the process, but everything Biden and these politicians do. Who's a poor politician? A poor elected official? Can you name any? That's like a working person, middle class, that's been in government for more than a term or two? Nope, can't do that. But what I can tell you is the Fed, the Federal Reserve Company, is has 30% of the national debt. We can default on that. We can tell them where to go. They can go well. But the problem is the politicians will take that money and spend it or steal it. Well, what the what the politic, you know, I don't get you, you're, everything you're saying is correct. OK, I'm not disagreeing with anything you're saying, but what's going on here in Ukraine, I, I've been talking this morning. Wh why do you think we don't see reporters embedded in the front lines of the Ukraine-Russian war with combat units? I haven't seen one. Well, that's obvious. That's obvious. They're crooked. Yeah, there's not a ma there's not major combat going on like they want us to believe, or they or they would be showing it to us. I'm 70 years old. I was I was around during the Vietnam conflict, and believe me, we would be having a fit with a useless war, killing people. We would not put up with this. Well, look at look at look at the war in Vietnam. Ten years. How many lives on? How many names on the wall? 50,000 plus names on the wall. Yeah. And that was for the same reason here, right? The military donors to the politicians. That's what it was all about. I stayed in college. I stayed, I stayed in college, did master's degrees and everything. You're smart. Yeah. You did the deferment. Go. You, useless war. Good, yeah. Good for you. Yeah. Now I understand why people sent their sons to Canada. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I had friends that went to Canada. I had friends that came back in Vietnam and committed suicide. Sure. You know, if, if I had a son who was thinking about going into service right now, I would do everything I could do to, to get them not to go into the service right now. Really? No, this, this war in Ukraine, you know, no, this war in Ukraine, they haven't even, they won't even say when it would be over. What, what would they consider it being over? There's no end goal. That's right. When they drain the treasury. That's right. Better off to just say, you know what? The, uh... nah, I don't. I think he's. I think he's getting ready to take a beat too far. When I heard the, you know, I think. I think he. The, you know, Lucky in Fort Lauderdale. Just. I better end it right there because he seems to be getting on a roll of a place where we don't want to go. All right, our numbers: triple eight, Gu, Kane, one, triple eight, four, six, five, twenty six, thirty one. It is Monday already. Oh, man. All right. Let's take some more calls. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hey, Brian. It's Ben from Papa. Duff. Hey, Ben. Um, so I wanted to probably, I think the thing about this war that jumps out me, uh, jumps at me the most is not only the timing, but just over the weekend, um, uh, Chuck Todd, uh, I forget his name. He's speaking, oh, Kirby. He was speaking to Chuck Todd, and he said the, the biggest giveaway that this is such a corrupt quagmire is that they said they have no end exit strategy. They're going to support them for as long as it takes. So it's going to be an indefinite money flow to Ukraine until it becomes so unsustainable they can't keep it going. And the timing of this is so odd. This, this war popped off right after the 20-year war that we ended in Afghanistan. That's right. You can't, you can't tell me that between those two things, there aren't the, the military industrial complex and the corruption at the highest level of the Democratic Party are working together to do something. It was just, it was so off because Trump, we had four years of no new wars. And all of a sudden, this establishment politician gets in office and the, the second one war ends, another begins. And it's with the most corrupt nation 
in Europe, give me a break. Yeah. And you know, Russia, Russia has been around for how long? You know, they're middle middle ages. They've never been defeated. They've never been defeated. And they're not. And and it's only a matter of time before we have U.S. troops in combat. I'm sure we already have. You know, all the equipment we're giving them is it. Well, and more than that, all the equipment we're giving them is high tech. They don't know how to use it. And everything's computerized. Everything's in English. So how do these Ukrainian kids even read the, the computer screens on all, on, the, on all of these things? Listen, I got to run, but thanks, thanks for the call. There's only one opening on our board. One hour down, two to go. It's the Steve Kane Show. I'm Brian Craig. Our number toll free, one triple eight go kane one triple eight four six five. 2631. We want to wish President Trump a happy President's Day. It is President's Day where we think of uh, our great president, Donald Trump, right? That's right. Happy President's Day to President Trump, who is at Mar-a-Lago right now. That's right, right down the street. We'll take our break for the top of the hour and be right back. I'm Brian. It's the Steve Kane Show. Don't go anywhere. All right. I'll be right back, guys. I'll, uh, I'll leave the mic behind. All right. I remembered to leave the mic behind. I checked in the mirror when I got in there to make sure. I was nervous that I had the mic on. All right. If you're new to my channel, subscribe. And everyone, please like the video. Liking the video helps a lot. There's one opening at one 465 2631 All right. Let me see where we are. All right. Oh, man. I tell you. Awful. Just awful. The only thing about this mic is the clip is really small. Okay, we got it. About a minute to go. Yeah, remember the hard time they gave Trump over the <clears throat> Puerto Rican hurricane? And he went there and he took relief and they gave him a hard time. And look, you know, Biden won't even go to Ohio.
And he really won't go now because people are like demanding he go. So that's all the more reason for him not to go. It's disgusting. <clears throat> <clears throat> oh, man. All right, we're coming back now. It's the last commercial. <clears throat> now, back to the Steve Kane Show with Brian Craig. All right, welcome back, one and all. It's the Steve Kane Show. My name is Brian Craig. It is Monday. Every line on the board is lit. Call us on hold. Stand by. If you're just waking up and tuning in, Biden is in Kiev promising another half a trillion dollars. That's right. Half a trillion dollars to Ukraine. Can you imagine? Oh, my goodness. Nothing for Palestine, Ohio. You're on your own, Palestine, Ohio. Ukraine, though, they have the, well, an open checkbook. They have blank checks from the U.S. Treasury. Isn't that nice? If you're in Palestine, Ohio, well, we can't help you. We can't visit you. We're not going to go there, but we're going to go to Ukraine. Are you kidding me? Um. President Carter is in hospice care at his home in Georgia. Is does he is this home in Plains, Georgia, by the way? Is he still like the house in, in Plains? Notice no peanut farm. What happened to that peanut farm they used to talk about? Um, Jimmy Carter, who some say is no longer the worst president, Joe Biden is. Well, you know, when you're suffering, it's always worse, but Jimmy Carter, far worse than even Joe Biden which I'll, I'll talk about as the show goes on. I'm not going to get into it right now. But uh, Palestine, Ohio, you're on your own, right? We've got uh, That's it. They've got this going on uh, in Ukraine, this visit. They'll be talking about that. And, and when President Carter passes away, we're going to see a state funeral like you haven't seen since Kennedy. Okay? They're going to use the uh, Carter memorial and funerals and line in state to keep everything out of the news. Um, and that's, that's, they got this whole plan. They've got like a month of distractions going on here. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Uh, good morning, Brian. Happy President's Day. It's Slick from YouTube. Hey, what's up? Slick from where? Slick from YouTube. Oh, Slick from YouTube. Hey, Slick, what's going on? Yeah, it's been a while. I just wanted to call in and uh, set the record straight on some uh, fake news that you're putting out over the airwaves here. Uh, that uh, you're saying that uh, this air raid siren in Kiev, uh, you know, it's all it's all not legit. It's all for theater. It's all for show. Well, I can tell you that uh, I've been reading some things on the internet here that uh, Ukrainian Ministry of Defense they had detected uh, some uh, irregularities on their radar, and uh, there was a UFO, an unidentified Ukrainian flying object, in their airspace. Now they fired a battery of Patriot missiles. Uh, they all missed, and it turned out to be that it was a $10 hobby balloon flown by Kiev students. There you go. Oh, man, just like, uh, yeah, isn't that wild? It took you a while to get there. I thought you were being combative for a moment, but you got me. Yeah, that's true. You know, that, man, ser serious, serious. Qu no, 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 that's, that's good. Dry humor is the best. That's the best. Um, in all seriousness, though, I, I think that there was no air raid. They just turned the siren on to, to make Biden's trip more exciting. What do you think? Uh, no, I agree. I mean, this whole war is for show. And, uh, you know, Zelensky is an actor. 
Yeah. That well, that's a fact. He is an actor, and his show is—is uh, is it still on Netflix? It was on Netflix, and I watched it right after the war began, and uh, it ended with a cliffhanger. Season one. It's what is it called? Man of the People. Zelensky show. I, I it's he, he's not a bad actor, and it ended with a cliffhanger. This is so true. The last episode of the first season, if it's still on Netflix, you can look it up. He get he gets a, he's he's an actor who becomes the president of Ukraine. Now we have art, you know, imitating life and life imitating art. The the cliffhanger was there's a phone call. Zelensky picks up the phone and who's on the line? Putin. And that was the season. That was the season finale cliffhanger. And I guess we're living through this the next season right now. Yes, life imitates art, but uh... well, this is. Let me tell you, this is. This is something that I, I've been talking about for a long time. There, why has there not been a summit meeting with the United States and Russia and Ukraine? And, and why won't they talk to Putin? You know, when, when there's a war going on, you want to stop it, right? And how do you, you have peace talks? There hasn't been one summit meeting or even a conversation with, with Putin about this. Come on. Well, obviously, they want the war to go on because that's what's best for business. That's right. They don't want the war to end. All right. Appreciate the call, Slick. Oh, man. You know, um, those of you that watch me on, on YouTube, I'm using a new microphone today for my YouTube live stream. It's a wireless microphone that I got over the weekend. And because uh, I've been using a wired mic while I live stream on YouTube. Now I got a wireless mic. It's clipped on. It's completely wireless. And it has a pretty long range. I can walk all over the building with it. I've been testing it out during some of the commercial breaks today. And I got to, I just got to keep reminding myself if I go to the men's room to take off the wireless mic. And, uh, you know, I'm just a little worried about that. that remember that happened to Fred Durst? He gave that interview. He had a, a, a microphone on and then he went to the men's room. He could hear everything. And he confessed to murders. Uh, I don't have any murders to confess to, but uh, I just got to remember to take the mic off when I go to the men's room. All right. Let's uh, go. There's one opening on the board where Slick was at. One triple eight go Kane. One triple eight four six five twenty six thirty one. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Good morning, good job, Doug. Hey, Doug. You know, how are you? Uh, yeah, yeah, well, first of all, thanks for that, those videos you made over the weekend uh, on the Mar-a-Lago and uh, talking about and Colton and everything. But yeah, and I went to I went to um, uh, Mar-a-Lago. I went to Jeffrey Epstein's house. Did you catch that? Yeah. Very, very nice. But, you know, uh, it, the, the subject now is this $500 billion being wasted robbing the treasury. You know, I, I like to say it the other way. $500,000 million being spent. So people you know, can maybe relate to that a little bit better. But what, uh, the robbing the treasury is really sad what's going on. You know, uh, people have rotten water and in uh, the, the, the areas of people that they showed a video of somebody lighting up their water coming out of their tap and lighting up. Uh, what? And, and, and it really in, in Ohio? I don't know. I, I was, it was, it was on news, but I caught it late. I don't know if it was in Ohio or was someplace else, but uh, lighting up water coming out and you spend $500 billion to help Ukrainians, which I don't mind helping Ukrainians, but $500 billion worth. That money is being now. Now, what do you what do you think about the? Uh, they they're telling us, you know, Biden. He's taking this is a war zone. The air raid siren went on while Biden was on the ground. Do you really think there was an air raid, or did he just turn on the siren? Turn on the siren. It's all all a big show, man. This is. <laughs> I mean, they're almost beginning to put on the siren. It's a good 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 feature. You know, I mean, they they come up with this stuff, and I think everybody's going to believe in it. Most people believe. You know, but I think it's a big con. Well, you know, I was when I heard I heard about this. This broke while I was in my car on ninety five on the way to the radio station today. Okay, it broke right then, and um, I watched a little bit of Fox before I went on the air. You know, to see their coverage. I've never seen a bunch of people moving a, a country towards war. They're so excited. The TV news loves wars. It's good for ratings. And, and the TV news are always going to push you towards a war so that you watch more TV. That's all they care about. 
you know, without a doubt. Uh, 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 the other thing that's going to, like you said, is going to take it away is going to be when, when Jimmy Cotton is his away. Oh. He is old and they're going to make it like he's the world's best president, but. Whatever. He was the worst. I'm gonna. Add, there's there's a handful of really bad presidents. After we get back from the break, I'll expand on what I mean about Jimmy Carter still being worse than Biden. I know it's tough while we're living through it and suffering the Biden regime, but I think most will agree with me after the break. All right, conservative Doug, take care. We'll take our first break of the hour and be back. Don't sit on the sidelines. Get on the action. Call the Steve K Show live on air now. 888-GO-K-1. This is the Steve K Show with Brian Craig. All right. Oh, man. Where am I? Yeah, guys, make sure that you like the video. Only a handful of you have liked the video so far. That helps me out so much, guys. You have no idea. Yeah, guys, make sure that you like the video. Only a handful. Yeah, this mic, not only uh, is this mic better audio quality, it has noise canceling tech in it. So a lot of the surrounding noise, I notice it's not picking up. There's things I'm hearing that are not coming through the video. So this mic, so far, so good. I'm just, the only thing I got to watch is if the battery on the mic will last for the whole three hour live stream and um, will it not run down the battery in my um, iPhone 14 Pro that I live stream with for three hours. We'll find out today. Uh. Oh. The commercial I was going to do live is recorded during this break. Okay. Have to do something else then. <clears throat> That's okay. I'll just do the one I was going to do in the next break now and the one I was going to do now in the next break. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, and don't forget, check out my podcast from last night. <clears throat> Robert Durst. I said Fred. Fred Durst is the singer. <laughs> well, I got the last name right. I'm not very good with names. <clears throat> I forget people's names all the time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, welcome back. One opening on our board at one triple H Go Kane one triple H four six five twenty six thirty one. I want to tell you guys about my chiropractor, Doctor Philip Appleton. He is amazing. His laser away pain treatment works. You hear the messages from our listeners talking about how it's helped them and family members be rid of just, well, pain that was beyond imagination. I mean, my goodness, Rabbi David talking about his mother in tears over pain. She saw Dr. Appleton, the laser away pain treatment, rid Rabbi David's mother of pain. He rid me of my arthritis pain after just one treatment. Years of suffering of my knee pain from my skateboard accident gone after just two treatments. You know, the laser away pain treatment works on so many types of pain. Arthritis like it did with me, bursitis, work injuries, sports injuries, strains and um, uh, sprains, repetitive motion injuries, post-surgical swelling, neck injuries, back injuries, tinnitus, sciatica, spinal stenosis, fibromyalgia, herniated disc, 
rotary rotary tears any joint and that's just that that's just some of the types of pain if you have pain call dr appleton it's a no charge consultation call him today be seen today uh he's open monday through saturday walk-ins are welcome you can find him online at appletoncairo.com or give him a call 954-973-0710 954-973-0710. All right, if you're just tuning in, Biden grabbed his checkbook and flew to Ukraine. He's in Kiev. They have air raid sirens going on. Give me a break. By the way, air raid sirens, it was about noontime. Who does an air raid in the middle of the day when you can see everything? Air raids, they typically do at night. Daytime air raids are very risky. Are the Russians running daytime air raids? I don't think so, especially with the President of the United States there. Please. All right, let's go. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Uh, Richard Pompano. Hey, Pompano. What's up? Hey, what? Okay, mm -hmm. I just want to change the subject. Ah, we'll see. Depends on what it is. I'm not going to agree to that, but let's see. You know, it's a yes or no thing. Uh, Fetterman. Uh, have to be senator when he didn't deserve it. You know, he was a Fetterman. Fetterman. Ah, <sighs> uh, yeah, right. Is if he can't function, and does the and if he is replaced, does the governor of Pennsylvania have that choice, or does it have every every state is different? So um, they they may because it's the beginning of the term. My guess would be they would have to have a special election. That doesn't mean that they wouldn't appoint somebody in the interim. And, and, and I'm sure his wife, um, Ava Perone, would be making a move to get that appointment. You know, that, this, is, this, is, this, is a, this is amazing to me. You see, this, this is why I stand by Santos. They're all after Santos and everything. Let the voters decide in two years. It's less than two years away. Here you got Fetterman, who's obviously brain damaged. And he's in the hospital. I don't buy that it's depression. I think he's probably had another stroke. Right. And he's locked in for six years. This is crazy. That's what, that's what I want to know. Is the governor a Republican? He can re no. Un unfortunately, no. No, they got a Democrat. They got a Democrat. Yeah, unfortunately. No. If it were, no. But that, this, this close in, I'm sure they'd have to have an election. They're not going to appoint someone to do a six-year term. There would be um, an election. All right. Good morning. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Drop from Palm Beach. Hello. All right. What's up? I think this is the worst president ever. Every time I call in, I'm going to say he is. Did you call in? He makes me call up with Tina. I'm sorry, but Biden's a little modern. I'm tired of giving. You know, we're hard. You know, we work hard. I'm tired of my taxpayer money going over to Ukraine. How many billions of dollars have we been giving them? Billions? We're in the trillions. We're in the trillions now. They're good. Biden's pledging another another five hundred billion. He's pledging half a trillion dollars today over there. An addition. So we're over a trillion. He's such a warmonger, and I don't know why the Democrat people even uh, even believe in anything he says. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He is signing a, an agreement with WHO to give up some of our medical care to WHO. To China. To China. Who controls the, the World Health Organization. That's right. Yeah. Who, yeah. Those people that put it. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. He, he's signing an agreement. So the WHO said every American needs to get a plan. Well. Yeah. Well. I want, I want to kind of stick at what we're talking about today, but I do appreciate the call. And, and I want to, I, I'm going to be specific about Jimmy Carter. I'm only talking about Jimmy Carter because he's in the news and he's in hospice. And, um, and he's not, I mean, it's any day now, you know. Um, Jimmy Carter, I know Biden seems worse because we're suffering and living through it. And, hey, listen, he could end up being worse. But Jimmy Carter, uh, the reason I say Jimmy Carter is worse than Biden at this point. Now, Biden, what he's doing with Ukraine and Russia could be worse than what uh, Carter did. What, what Carter did was put the, um, 
Islamic uh, Ayatollah is in charge of Iran. You know, and yeah, I mean, Jimmy Carter is responsible for the Islamic theocracy in Iran. And since they took over, Iran has been funding pretty much all of the Islamic terrorism around the world. Okay. There was, there was Islamic terrorism before Jimmy Carter and the Ayatollah, you know, took over Iran and all that. I, I understand but not at the level we've had since then, right? The Palestinians, Hamas against Israel, um, you know, Libya, ISIS, Al-Qaeda. You know, Iran has been funding all of this since, you know, 1980, early 80s, and they're funding it today. So the reason I say Jimmy Carter, he's had a lot more time for his mess-ups to affect our lives the reason I say Jimmy Carter is worse than Biden at this point is because of all this Islamic terrorism that would not have happened or been funded if Jimmy Carter didn't put the Ayatollahs in charge of Iran. All right. But I mean, Biden's our primary focus right now because we're suffering through Biden right now. But that's that's where I put Jimmy Carter. And that's that's a fact. And, you know, um, when. When I, I watch the news coverage of Jimmy Carter, um, they talk about the, the American hostages, 444 days, and they act like it's something that just happened to him. It's not something that just happened to him. He put a lot of things in place. You know, this deep state that's after Trump all the time, okay? The deep state had a, uh, had a coup in Iran in the 50s and put the Shah of Iran in charge. Right, the, the the Shah of Iran was a CIA figurehead that was put in uh, in the fifties, and that's that's the uh, that's the way of it. Okay, so Jimmy Carter is responsible for so much of this Islamic terrorism that's going on, and his incompetence, his stupidity, and everything else connected to him is um, why the world is in the state it is in the Middle East right now. And the Iran hostages were taken because of his stupidity and his incompetence. It's not something that just happened to him. He did a lot of things that resulted in it happening. And one of the things I just can't, it just am amazes me, is that the uh, U.S. Marine Guards at the U.S. Embassy in Tehran uh, were, um, they had guns with no bullets because Jimmy Carter didn't want them to shoot any, uh, any of the student protesters. So Jimmy Carter ordered the uh, Marines to have weapons, but no ammunition. Can you imagine? That's the kind of mindset, you know, that's the way it is. But, you know, hey, listen, you know, that's just my opinion on it. I was a little child when it happened. I remember it clearly. I was in third grade. I remember very clearly, and if uh, you have another opinion, I'm, I'm certainly here taking your calls. We'll take our break for the bottom of the hour and be right back. Making morning radio great again.
So it's going to allow pen. Oh my goodness. Oh yeah. The reason there's inflation is when the government is spending too much money and they're making more money and there's too much money in the money supply. That's what causes inflation. Inflation is caused by government spending money. Only cause of inflation, really. <clears throat> Only one I know of. Don Lemon's on his last leg. Our listeners do great commercials. Well, the new mic so far, it were halfway through and is still a full charge. So. Oh, really? No, it wasn't. <laughs> All right, here we go. Coming back. I'll have to look. It's a it's a cheap knockoff brand I got on Amazon. It's not one of the big names. I'll look it up in a minute. All right. Welcome back. Our number one AAA Go Cane One. You know, there's many ways to listen to the program, including your devices at home at home. Alexa, play True Oldies FLA. Hey Google. Play True Oldies FLA. Boom. Now I'm on all your devices at home. And you, by the way, you can listen to our station all day and all night that way too. If you're at the office, you got uh, one of those devices in your... I don't want to say the name again because they're listening to me. I'll, it'll stop. But if you have one of those devices in your office, you can listen in your office to the music all day too on the radio station. All right. If you're just tuning... Oh, I forgot. Alexa, volume seven. Hey, Google. Volume nine. All right. Let, yeah, let's really, let's, let's blast out the, the Google people. All right. 
Um, welcome back, everyone. If you're just tuning in, um, Biden went to Ukraine. They had a fake air raid. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm reading about it in Fox. Hold on. Let me pull this up. Let me pull this up. I was just reading this. Listen to this. This is Fox News. Sirens could be heard in war-torn Ukraine as Biden arrived in the country. The U.S. has already supported Ukraine with tens of billions with a B of dollars in financial aid and military equipment. And Biden has pledged another $500 billion with a B just today. So air, air raid sirens could be heard. Were there any incoming aircraft? You know, we need air raid sirens in America. A lot, you know, there's another balloon they spotted off Hawaii. We're under air attack. Not Ukraine, right? Any air raid sirens over Lake Huron? Any air raid sirens over Alaska the other day? When the Now, let me play this clip. This is Biden talking about Ukraine. Yeah. Allow pensions and social support to be paid to the Ukrainian people so they have something, something in their pocket. Okay. Now, um, yeah, I know. Watch the reporters on the ground in Ukraine and Kiev. Does that look like a war torn city? You know, a lot of their car, I know they show things that have been hit and everything. It kind of reminds me of, of the cable news coverage in New Orleans after Katrina. I remember Anderson Cooper, he was kind of new over there at CNN at the time. He was reporting for it would seem like months in front of this upside down house. It looked like the house from Wizard of Oz when it landed on the witch. It was upside down. And he was reporting there for like weeks and months. Remember that reporter? Anybody remember what network this was? There was a there was a reporter in New Orleans. Remember this? There was a, a television reporter in New Orleans reporting on the flooding after Hurricane Katrina, and she was sitting in a rowboat, and she was doing this live report. Of, I'm, on, I'm in the streets of New Orleans. It's flooded. I'm reporting from a boat. And then two guys walked behind her. Right? Remember that? What network was that? Was that NBC? It was one of the big ones. Well, that's, I know. Isn't that something? That is what I suspect is going on in Ukraine. No air raid, just the sirens. That's it. That's it. Now, I want to get to some other things, though, uh, and your calls are most definitely um, welcome on the program. Okay. The um, I got an update on something that I covered on my podcast last night. There's something new um, that I'm going to share with you. And um, yeah, this is uh, interesting here. Well, everything I bring, isn't everything I bring up interesting? It absolutely is. That's right. <laughs> but I want you to pay careful attention to what I'm telling you here, okay? Um, the, there's a Washington leadership elite that run this country. And uh, most of them are people whose names you don't know. But there were people in, you know, I call them the eyes wide shut crowd. If there was an eyes wide shut party, the people that would be at the party in the masks. One of them is Andrea Mitchell. Now, I played this clip on my podcast last night, but I'm going to play it again. And then there's an update. Andrea Mitchell of NBC News is one of the elites. Remember who her husband is Alan Greenspan, who led the Fed for how long? So Andrea Mitchell is one of the ruling elites. And when she says something, in particular involving the Democrat Party, this is not your typical fake news journalist just saying something. Okay? When Andrea Mitchell says something, in particular when it involves Democrat power plays in Washington, you can take it to the bank. All right, because she's in that eyes wide shut crowd. She is where the decisions are made. Okay, she's Alan Greenspan's wife. It's, it's still amazing to me that she's still on television. When High Definition came in, I thought she was going to retire. And then 4K came in, I thought, well, this is finally going to be it. And she's still on. She survived HD. She survived 4K. By the way, Don Lemon is on his way out. Not the closet. He came out of that a long time ago. He was on his way out at CNN. 
um, their meeting about his exit. And he must really be, he must have done something really bad that we don't know about. Do you know how hard it is to fire a black gay man? I mean, it's almost impossible to fire a black gay man. And Don Lemon is right there. But anyway, back to this. So Andrea Mitchell, she had a sit down interview with Kamala Harris and I uh, just got one clip of it. And then there's an update, which I'll get to. Here it is. Dozens of Democratic leaders are saying that they not only don't think that he's the strongest candidate, you know, considering the law. That he is, is Biden, of course, that she's talking about. They not only don't think that he's the strongest candidate, you know, considering the larger field that could be possible given his age and other defects, but they don't think that you're the right person to be on the ticket. Why do you think that? I think that it is very important to focus on the needs of the American people and not political chatter out of Washington, D.C. And you obviously ran for president in 2020. You want to be president. Do you still want to be president someday? Joe Biden intends, has said he intends to run for re-election as president, and I intend to run with him as vice president of the United States. Okay. And there's an update, which I'm going to get to in just a moment. Okay, so so this is amazing. I got to remember, Andrea Mitchell is that upper level ruling elite of our country, right? She is doing a couple of things here. One, she's foreshadowing to the viewers of NBC News, letting them know that Biden and Kamala are out. Okay. And notice this is this was a ambush interview that Andrea Mitchell did of Kamala Harris, which is unheard of for a Democrat liberal ju uh, jur journalist. I almost said jerk that too. Journalist interviewing a Democrat elected official like this. They don't do ambush interviews. She ambushed Kamala Harris with that question, and you can tell by Kamala's response. Normally, Kamala answers an uncomfortable question with a cackle. There was no bizarre, weird cackle. She was serious. And she said, don't pay attention to Washington chatter. So she knows they're talking about it this way. So uh, that's there's a major move going on to purge the field of Biden and Kamala. Now, to, to my knowledge, certainly in the modern era, this is true. This may have happened in the 1800s. But to my, I'm talking about the modern era. To my knowledge, the, the sitting president and vice president not running for re-election after their first term is unheard of. Um, there have been things similar, but not like this. Um, Johnson didn't run for that next term that he, he could have had, but he finished Kennedy's first term. You understand? He wasn't in his first term. He was in his first term of his own, but he finished Kennedy's term. Same goes for Truman. Truman didn't run, you know, uh, Johnson didn't run because he knew he was going to lose. Okay, he didn't want to be humiliated. You know, he didn't mind being responsible for the deaths of 10,000 Americans in Vietnam. He doesn't worry about, but he didn't want to lose. So he didn't run. Truman didn't run again, but he finished uh, FDR's for, uh, fourth term. So that's not the same thing. A, a president and a vice president in their first term being passed over both, at least there's a move to make that happen, is unheard of. Um, well, let me take the break before I get the update on that. I'll get the next part of that after the break. You're listening to The Steve Kane Show. My name is Brian Craig. This is Florida's longest running radio show on the radio since 1977, celebrating 46 years on the radio this year. The Steve Kane Show. Our number is toll-free, 1-888-GO-KANE-1, 888-465-2631. 888-465-2631. It's a toll-free call no matter where you are calling from. We'll take our break and be right back. The cold. Hard. Truth. Delivered morning 6 to 9 right here on The Steve K Show. 
But you know, the real estate is selling for the highest prices ever. With so many rich in your house, your house can stand out above the rest and get top dollar. And that's why some real estate agent Elena Castro comes in. She's with Ballastari Real Estate and has been in business since 1964. Working with homeowners, buyers, landlords, and tenants for over 18 years, Elena Castro knows Florida real estate and has a proven record of smooth transactions, as well as top negotiation talents. When you list your property with Elena Castro, she knows the right listing price to get you multiple offers so you accept the offer you want. And if you're looking to buy, she can help you with that too. Give Elena Castro a call right now. 954-478-5015. 954-478-5015. And get your house listed and sold for the price you want. 954-478-5015. 954-478-5015. Parents, are you tired of helping put your kids' shoes on? They're squirming, watching cartoons, anything but helping. Luckily, it's Skechers to the rescue. Introducing new hands-free Skechers slip-ins. Footwear you can just get your kids to step into and their shoes are on. You don't need to bend over. You don't need to sit on the floor and try to wrangle them on. And they're available in all types of Skechers styles, with and without laces, and most are machine washable. Find Skechers slip-ins for kids or mom and dad at a Skechers store, Skechers.com, or wherever stylish shoes are sold. Hi, this is Keith Singer, Singer Well. If you want to retire in retirement, not only do you need to make smart investment choices, you need to make smart tax choices as well. The IRS is waiting to collect your part of that account, and you can minimize what they get, but you have to use the right strategies. To learn about these strategies... No, he did not endorse DeSantis. I talked about that on Friday's show. He did not endorse DeSantis Soros. That's that's not true. That's inaccurate. So you and your family can keep as much of your IRA as possible. Cookie wants to be a professional wrestler. Hey everyone, only a, a handful of you have liked the video. If you've not liked the video, please do. That helps me out a lot. DeSantis and Trump are working together. They're a team. We take on the social justice warriors for breakfast. Now, the Steve. All right. Yes, yes, yes. Welcome back. I'm Brian. It's the Steve Kane Show. And of course, we want to wish a happy President's Day to Donald Trump, who is at Mar a Lago right now. I was just there on Saturday. If you guys go to my YouTube channel, you can watch my visit to Mar a Lago. It's pretty exciting, too. Went by Jeffrey Epstein's house, went to uh, Russia's house, all kinds of things. You'll, you'll check that out on my YouTube channel. All right. Now, you know, here in Florida, we've got the greatest governor ever, Ron DeSantis. Oh, man. The greatest governor, not just in the history of Florida governors, but the greatest governor in the history of all American governors. And, you know, Ron DeSantis is a lot of great things. But one thing he is, he really, he's not only is he pro-business, he's pro-Floridian and pro homeowner. And he has done something absolutely amazing. We have new insurance laws in the state of Florida. I'm talking about Tom Laporta at Laporta Contracting here. Listen to this. If you're a homeowner or a property owner and you have commercial property and your roof is in need of repair or maybe it's old or compromised and you've got problems, you want to call your insurance company, of course. But right after you call your insurance company, Call Tom Laporta at Laporta Contracting. With these new laws in effect in the state of Florida, Tom Laporta, who will never sell you a roof you do not need, can negotiate directly with your insurance company on the cost of all the repairs. So you may not need to hire a public adjuster or an attorney to deal with your insurance company. Now, listen, I've been there. I've used a public adjuster. And public adjusters can help you get a, a, a settlement from um, your insurance company, but and, and, and a lawyer can too sometimes, but the problem is you got to pay them. And if I remember correctly, the public adjuster that I dealt with got 20% of the claim. So if, you, if you've got a $10,000 repair, you've got, if it's 20%, you got to give 2,000 of it to the adjuster, but the repair still costs 10K You've got to come up with that other $2,000 out of your pocket. With this new law that we have here in the great state of Ron DeSantis's free Florida, you can bypass the public adjuster. You can bypass the attorney. Tom Laporta at Laporta Contracting deals directly with your insurance company, and you don't have to pay those other guys, and boom, you don't have to reach into your pocket. 
Isn't that something? It's absolutely amazing. And by the way, I, I've heard horror stories about how much people have paid attorneys to deal with their insurance company. They, the attorney basically gets the claim. I mean, basically, what good is that? Give Tom Laporte a call. Now, if you need an attorney, if you need an adjuster still, which you probably won't, but if you do, Tom Laporta at Laporta Contracting can introduce you with some good guys that he works with that'll get you some results. But this is amazing. Give Tom a call. He's a good MAGA guy, and this number rings directly to his cell phone. 954-604-4602. 954-604-4602. One more time. 954-604-4602. All right. So uh, that clip uh, before uh, the break there, Andrea Mitchell, the eyes wide shut elite crowd that runs our country, is setting the stage for Joe and Kamala to be passed over. Well, there's a third wheel that the Democrats have. His name's Bernie Sanders. And something happened with Bernie Sanders over the weekend. He went on one of the liberal Sunday shows and he got called out for being a, a fake socialist. He's really a capitalist. You know, Bernie Sanders. He's a millionaire many times over who has how many houses? Was it five? One of them being a, a summer camp on the lake. I think, I think it's camp, camp Crystal Lake. Is that what it's called? Who has a summer camp? I'll tell you who, Bernie Sanders. Yeah, it's on a lake. Uh, but they're trying to get him out of the way too. So Bernie Sanders goes on uh, one of the Sunday shows and gets called out as a hypocrite, fake socialist. Listen. I have to ask you, you're going on tour to promote this book, It's Okay to Be Angry About Capitalism. And you're here talking about it. I understand we're not the bad guys you're, you're describing in the book when it comes to media. But tickets for your tour apparently are selling for $95 on Ticketmaster, which is con accused of anti-competitive behavior. You know wait, wait, wait a minute. How much was that on Ticketmaster? in the book when it comes to media, but tickets for your tour apparently are selling for $95. $95 a person to go see Bernie Sanders? Master, which is con mm. accused mm. of anti-competitive behavior. You know that some of your Democrats are criticizing them. Aren't you benefiting yourself no, from this system that you're all, trying to dismantle? First of all, those decisions are made totally by the publisher and the bookseller. I think there's one case where in one place here in Washington, mm -hmm. po uh, politics and pros and independent books are charging some tickets. Most of them, I think, are $40, $50, $50 and you get a book as well. So if you want to come, you can have to pay 40 bucks. I'll throw in the book for free. And we're doing a number of free uh, events, but I don't make a nickel out of these things. But you're okay doing business with Ticketmaster? No, not particularly, but that's, again, I have nothing to do with that. That is, if you wrote a book, it would probably be the same process. Mm -hmm. So you have to operate within the system. I do. Is what I you're write a book, a major publisher, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Now, I know this seems like a minor thing to most people, but it's not. See, So over the weekend, Andrea Mitchell with Kamala, Bernie Sanders being called a fake socialist by liberal Sunday shows. This is unheard of. They're trying to expose Bernie Sanders that he's a phony baloney to his constituents. So that they can get, they'll buy him off. He's always, you know, he's always up for being bought off Bernie Sanders. He's done it before for endorsements and everything, but they're looking to keep him from running period. And they're starting to discredit him. There's a big move going on. Now that does not mean that Biden and Kamala are not going to run or Bernie either. Okay. But there, what it shows is there's major division inside the Democrat party. They want to run Newsom. Uh, Cuomo will probably run and, and, and maybe some other people that, uh, you know, it doesn't matter. They're, they're, they keep talking about this fight that we have inside the Republican Party, Haley, DeSantis, Trump, you know, Pompeo and all this stuff. And, you know, there's a little division there with Nikki Haley. I still think Governor DeSantis and Donald Trump are working together in a very clever operation. Nobody believes it. So I, I feel comfortable talking about it because nobody believes me when I, you know, nobody agrees with me on that. So, you know, it's not like I'm letting the cat out of the bag if no one believes it. But um, the real division, the real fight for the nomination is what's going on on the Democrat side. They want to pass over the sitting president and vice president. Right. They want to pass over this third wheel, Bernie Sanders, who, who runs so that he can get a payoff at the end of the campaign. You know, it started when he was running against Hillary. Obama brought him to the Oval Office. Bernie walked out and endorsed Hillary, and then all of a sudden he's got five houses, right? Yeah. And his wife was involved in some 
some financial scandal at the college that she seemed to really just skate away from and had no problems, Bernie Sanders. So there, 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 there's a major fight going on inside the Democrat Party for who their nominee is going to be. And that is beautiful because there's really no fight. There's really no fight. We have, you know, Nikki Haley's not even a player. She's got 3% more support than I do. Okay. And I'm not running. So she's not even a, Nikki Haley is not even a credible person. And we were talking since last week and it was Richie, the bus driver who first made this point. And I, I'm not going to give him credit every time I do this from now until doomsday, but I want to make sure that he gets the credit because he thought of something that I had not, occur, that, that had not occurred to me or anyone else. But uh, President Trump wants primary opponents so that um, he gets prime time television coverage of Republican presidential debates when we have these primaries. They are not going to carry his rallies on television. They're not going to be carried on cable news. Okay. But they will carry the debates. In fact, they'll sponsor the debates. NBC, they'll carry the debate. It'll be on MSNBC. It may even be on the network. CBS will get one. ABC will get one. CNN will get one. Fox will get them. They won't carry a rally, but they'll carry the primary debates. And we need a lot of people running to have a lot of debates and a lot of interest and build up to, okay, who's going to, who's going to drop out after this next primary, just like we did the first campaign. And, and Trump's uh, second race, he didn't have any primary opponents. So there were no debates, no debates, no television coverage because they will not cover the Trump rallies. You know, that's one of the reasons we didn't do better than we did in the house. We won the house. We won. But we would have done better if they would have carried the rallies, but they didn't carry the rallies. So the, I, I think it's a an incredible strategy that Trump is running here. And um, I'm going to credit Richie just this one last time with uh, since the beginning of the week. Uh, of, of the first person I heard bring that up. He brought it up to me last week and it did not occur to me. And I've not heard anybody else report on it. And that's a pretty, pretty sharp strategy. All right. Now, after the top of the hour, um, there's a couple. Uh, we'll get back to Biden's trip to Ukraine. Don't worry. But there's a couple other things that we've got to touch on as well after the top of the hour break. And, you know, a lot of these things are uncomfortable to talk about. I get it. But we're still going to talk about them. Ann Coulter, Ann Col I hope Ann Coulter's listening. She lives in Palm Beach. I hope Ann Coulter's listening. If you're a friend of Ann Coulter's, tell her to turn the radio on, or better yet, her elect Alexa, play True Oldies FLA. Hey, Google, play True Oldies FLA. I know that Ann Coulter has one of those. Have Ann turn that on, and she is welcome to uh, call in in the next hour, too, uh, at one 465 2631 uh, we're going to talk about what Ann Coulter did over the weekend. And um, it's really, I used to be such a, a big, humongous, almost to the level of embarrassment fan of Ann Coulter's. And, and she's just completely betrayed us. Now, um, I got a call uh, in the first hour of the show from Mike in Louisiana. I know, shocker, right, that Mike called. No, but he called. He, uh, over the weekend, got his MyPillow 2.0. Mike Lindell's new MyPillow. The MyPillow 2.0, Mike Lindell has done what I didn't even think would be possible. He has improved on perfection. The MyPillow that started it all, he's taken it to a whole new level. The MyPillow 2.0 has cooling technology in it. You know, your head and your face get hot at night. Your pillow gets warm. What do you do? You flip over the pillow. Well, when you flip over the pillow, you've just interrupted your night's sleep. I've been sleeping on my MyPillow 2.0, as has my wife, for a week and a half now. It's amazing. It's cool to the touch. You put your hand on it. It's cool. Your head, your face will never get warm. My wife was telling me, you know, my wife's 52 and uh, she was telling me, you know, women that are suffering through menopause, get those, those night sweats. It helps with that. So uh, right now the MyPillow 2.0 is buy one, get one free with our promo code Kane at checkout, K-A-N-E. And just a heads up to you that buy one, get one free offer on the MyPillow 2.0 is temporary. The MyPillow 2.0 is selling beyond their projections. They knew it would sell well because, you know, people want to support Mike Lindell and everything Mike Lindell makes is great, but everyone's got the MyPillows, right? They didn't think it would sell this well. And when they start to run low on inventory, that buy one, get one free offer on the MyPillow 2.0 will just disappear. 
I got two because it's buy one, get one free. Take advantage. Go to MyPillow.com. Use our promo code Kane at checkout, K-A-N-E, and get your MyPillow 2.0. Buy one, get one free right now. You can also order by phone, toll free, 1-800-716-4879. 1-800-716-4879. That's 1-800-716-4879. Promo code Kane, K-A-N-E. All right, we're going to take our break for the top of the hour. When we get back, I'm going to get in. We'll, we'll talk more about Ukraine, but I want to go through the, the disgusting comments that the once great Ann Coulter made about our wonderful president, Donald Trump. All right, it's the Steve Kane Show. I'm Brian Craig. Back after this. Um, because they what? Yeah, thanks, guys. Yeah. It does, yeah. I'm I'm curious to see if it's run down the battery on my iPhone that I live stream on. And we got an hour to go. It's supposed to last four hours when it's fully charged. So when I'm vlogging, I it's no problem. But when I'm live streaming, I don't know. But I like it. I like not having the wire in front of me. Oh, my goodness. All right. LLG, not only do the left hate Ann Coulter, now the MAGA conservatives hate her. Heck, I'm sure establishment Republicans will. Um, I, think the, I think the liberals are going to start to like Ann Coulter, you know, the... Enemy of my enemy is my friend. You know, Ann Coulter has not been relevant for years. And maybe this is her way of trying to make a comeback. <clears throat> you know? It's possible. Could you see the uh, coven of the view having her on now that she's trashing Trump like this? I do. These are really ugly comments. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play them when we get back. I was so ticked. I did a Sunday morning live stream. I was having my morning coffee about it. I was so upset about it. Oh, boy. Does, does Ann Coulter have a new book out that she's plugging, or was it just randomness? Hey, I'm not sure if she has a new book out now or not. She was talking about a book she wrote about Trump years ago. I didn't hear her talking about the new book and the clips I have. No, no.
I don't think she has a new book either. Maybe she can't get a book deal because no one would buy it. So if she writes Trump trashy books, maybe she thinks she'll sell those. You got to wear your MAGA hats today for President's Day. This is President Trump's day. This is my new MAGA hat, not the old one I always wear. Hmm. All right, we're coming back down. All right. Welcome back. It is Monday, five minutes after eight o'clock in the morning. You're listening to the Steve Kane Radio Show, Florida's longest running radio show on the radio since 1977. I'm Brian Craig. Steve joining us. Hey, Steve. Good morning to you. Oh, man. Lots going on today. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Yeah. I had an exciting weekend. I um, I went to Mar-a-Lago this weekend. I went to Russia's house and I, I went over to um, Jeffrey Epstein's house too. So <laughs> I had, had an exciting weekend. Everything cool on the Western Front? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just making a YouTube video showing all these places, you know. So, you know, just I'm plugging my YouTube channel, guys. So if you go check it out, you can see that. I went to some other places too and uh, had some police roll up on me in golf car, on a golf cart up there too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, well, I was. I, I, um, well, you know what I think happened is, you know, I went up to this very exclusive area of Palm Beach and I went by, um, uh, the Kennedy compound and I stopped off at Howard Stern's place and I was sitting, uh, on my, uh, MAGA scooter in front of Howard Stern's mansion and I'd been riding around all day. I was a little tired. So I was just kind of sitting there and I was, you know, checking my email and text messages and everything. And then these two police officers rolled up on me in a golf cart. And I was, I was, you know, Howard Stern's kind of girly these days. He's not the tough guy he used to be. I was wondering if he saw me out there with my MAGA hat on and uh, called the popo. I don't know. Called 5 0 on me. I don't know. <laughs> Cause I'm sitting out there with my MAGA hat on in front of his house. I, I don't know. But the, the police were fine. You know, I'm not a, you know. I'm not a very, you know, I'm not a very suspicious looking guy, but I think maybe the MAGA hat could, may have triggered uh, Howard Stern. And then I went home and and was the victim of, of a home robbery, Steve. Um, I was robbed uh, at home over the weekend. Oh, my goodness. It was almost it was like a home invasion robbery. I had to do something that I've only done twice in my life, and I got robbed both times. I had to call a plumber. Oh my, Steve, this guy, I mean, he, you know, this, this, this was a strong arm robbery. He didn't have a weapon, but, um, you know, I, I'm a handy man. I can fix some things around the house. And if I can't fix something, usually there's someone I can call. They can help you. I'm a father-in-law, somebody, or, you know, or sometimes I'll just go online and look up how to fix something. But my plumbing problem was beyond those abilities. And I had to call a plumber. And, um, he, and I I knew what was wrong with the plumbing that needed fixed, but I didn't tell him. I wanted to see if what he told me, you know, and, and he told me, and I was right. What I thought needed fixed, uh, needed fixed. Um, my, my kitchen sink was stopped up and it was backing up into my dishwasher and everything else. And I needed to have a, uh, the drain outside the house snaked. And, um, he went out and looked at it. And he came back in before he would do the work. I had to pay him. Can you imagine? If, you know, it's like I'm getting to that. Uh, well, I, I'll tell you, I'm flat broke right now, Steve. I got to ride the MAGA scooter because it only, you know, it's cheap on gas now for a while. But um, he he went out and looked at it. Came back, told me what was wrong, which is what I knew was wrong. And uh, he says it's about a 45 minute repair, which I knew was BS. Six hundred fifty one dollars, and um, yeah, six hundred fifty one dollars, and it took him ten minutes. And yeah, it took him 10 minutes and that included taking his equipment out and putting it back together. And when he, when he went out the house, I, I went in the other room. I told my wife, I said, he said 45 minutes. He, 
I said, he's going to pretend that it's taken him 45 minutes so that I feel like I'm getting my money's worth and he's actually doing some, you know, something that takes time. But he took 10 minutes. And uh, then he tapped on my window and asked if I would turn my faucet on to see if it was still stopped up. You know, so I, I he wanted me to be his helper. Six hundred fifty one dollars. So and and I bring this up because, um, you know, that re I and, and I did see what came out. The, the, the sink was clogged. The snake was completely filled. And it was probably the first time it had been snaked since the house was built in the 1970s. And it and the smell that came out of it, Steve, it's I can still smell it. It smelled like death. It was pretty bad. But that that, that should have cost like two hundred bucks, two fifty. You know, not not six hundred fifty one dollars. I mean, what, what an embarrassment, you know. So if if you're an honest plumber, we need the Tom Laporta of plumbing. Right. Tom. Will... <laughs> oh, well, I'm ready to do it. And if you're an honest plumber that doesn't commit uh, home invasion robberies like the guy I called. Uh, yeah, really. Uh, get in touch with me and then we'll, we'll here at the radio station, we'll get back in touch with you and we'll start telling people, uh, <laughs> about an honest plumber. If there's such a thing as an honest plumber, I need one. All right. So let me, um, and I'm, I'm serious by the way, guys, uh, that was insane. All right. Now, um, there's a lot going on before we get back to Ukraine. I wanted to get into this Ann Coulter business. Um, let me see here. Do I have time to play this? Yeah, we got time to play this. Um, Ann Coulter is a long time never Trumper. Okay. She was with Trump in the early days of the first campaign. And then she turned and you got to understand, you know, Ann Coulter is part of that Republican establishment crowd, right? She's got that weird accent like John Kerry kind of has, you know what I mean? That rich person, Boston Brahmin type accent. That sounds kind of British, you know? Um, and she's part of that, you know, she's friends with Kellyanne Conway's husband and these and all these never never Trumpers. Well, because she was a vocal anti-Trump person and she got canceled. Well, she gave an interview over the weekend to Tim Poole, who's a, a YouTuber who's, who's pretty big on YouTube. And, um, he agreed with everything she said, you know, he's, you know, and all this stuff, he's a weirdo, but, um, I wanted to play this. And I, I used to be such a fan of Ann Coulter. We've had her on the show many, many times. Um, she's even been on my podcast, not for a long time. And she just said terrible things about president Trump. Let me play them for you guys. This is awful. I, I, and it's, I used to be such a fan of Ann Coulter. And then she does this. Um, because the, what, the 2016 campaign, I, I think, was the greatest presidential campaign in world history. But in the book, I make it very clear he's an awful person. He's a con man. He's a grifter. Um, horrible, tacky vulgarian. Got all that. But he's the only one offering us this basket of issues I want to vote on. Yeah. Obviously, number one, immigration. Number two, three, and four, immigration and the wall. Bringing trade back, this worship of free trade. Um, and no more stupid wars. Those were like the three biggest things. And then and he supported things like, you know, gun rights very strongly. So D Trump gets elected, doesn't build the wall, builds 33 miles, you know, six months before the election. It's a 2,000 mile border. Yeah, I think he's a narcissistic. I, I didn't mean the one thing I didn't know when I wrote In Trump We Trust is how profoundly stupid he is. Um, I made very clear in the book, the only thing he could do, we will forgive him for anything. And I defended him the day after the Access Hollywood, you know, grabbing tape came out. I was giving a speech before like 5,000 people in California up in farmland. And I was pedal to the metal defending him. And, and, you know, I said, we'll forgive him for anything, but unless you betray us on immigration. Yeah. Oh, and guess what he did? You can't do every campaign rally, build the wall, build the wall, build the wall, and then not build the wall and expect to get reelected. Okay, that's Ann Coulter of the weekend. I mean, just ugliness. Now, first off, well, she's, she's trying to be relevant again, and I guess being a Trump basher might get her on The View or get her on TV again. She said Trump only built 30 some miles of wall. That's not true. My recollection is he built a, a, around 450 miles of wall and a, a whole bunch of that border. You don't need to build a, a wall because, you know. 
that he was working right until he didn't. Yeah, and the 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 reason the reason the wall was not completed was not President Trump. Paul Ryan, the we we controlled both houses of Congress in the first two years of Trump's first term. Paul Ryan and Mitch McConnell stopped the funding for the wall for two years. Then we had Pelosi and Schumer. So you know most presidents. They only have to deal with opposition from the opposition party. President Trump had to deal with opposition from his own party and the Democrats. And even against that, he almost finished the wall. He did over 450 miles of wall. She's a liar. And she's trying to be relevant again by becoming a Trump basher. And she's going to become even more irrelevant the more that she does this. I mean, I'm really disgusted by Ann Coulter because I was such a fan of hers. And, you know, what, what's happened is, the the Republican establishment set Trump up so that he couldn't get funding to do the wall. And then they blame him and say, well, he didn't build the wall. He built over 450 miles of wall. I may be off by a couple miles. Maybe someone knows the exact mileage. If President Trump is listening to Mar-a-Lago, we always have a phone line open for you, President Trump, especially on your day, President's Day. But she's just a damned liar. And the ugliness coming out of her mouth, you can hear the anger. The, the, the stupid and these and these other things, you know, and uh, she says Ron DeSantis has a record of accomplishment. He'll finish the wall. DeSantis is awesome, but but he doesn't have his his state legislature that Republicans control working against him. They're working with him. Yeah, you, you understand? You know, so uh, give me a break. And and um, if if she's a Republican trashing Trump, she'll find herself on all the television. Again, The View, CNN, MSNBC, I think that's what, what she's uh, moving towards doing. But I, I'm... It's going to be a backlash against... I, I think so. And uh, I hope that there is. And, you know, Ann Coulter uh, is in the listening area of our radio stations. I'd, I'd welcome the call from Ann Coulter um, on the program. I mean, you know, she's pretty good. She'd probably fillet me. And you both, Steve. She has nothing to fear. Okay, I'm sure. But um, I, I was, I'm pretty disgusted by, by this interview she did with, with Tim Pool. All right, listen, we're going to take our first break of the hour. We'll be right back. It's the Steve Kane Show. Don't go anywhere. Don't sit on the sidelines. Get in on the action. Brian Craig here with a question for seniors and those who care about them. How would you like to have instant access to a healthcare app at the touch of a button? Can that make life easier for you? You can with I Will Advocates. I Will Advocates will help you set up doctor's appointments, help with your pharmacy, even deal with your pharmacist to make sure that you have your prescriptions. They'll help you find a doctor or appoint a specialist. If you've been billed improperly by a doctor's office or a hospital, they can help you with that too. They'll even be your advocate when you're in the hospital to make sure you get the care you need care you deserve. And that's just the beginning of what they do. I Will Advocates takes care of all Steve Kane's health care issues too, and they can do the same for you. I Will Advocate clients are family, and they give back to their family when you need them the most. Call Debbie at I Will Advocates right now. Toll free, 1-877-275-2326. 1-877-275-2326. 1-877-275-2326. Here's how we long for Skechers hands-free slip and footwear. The rule has gone hands-free. However, if you want to put on a pair of sneakers, you still need to bend down and help your feet until now. Introducing Skechers hands-free slip and footwear. You don't need to reach down to help your heel in. You just step into them and off you go. Hey, so Chuck, I just... Well, I just got your uh, message there on Patreon. Thanks so much. And they stay on just like a pair of laced up sneakers. Get hands free slip ins at a Skechers store, Skechers.com, or wherever stylish footwear is sold. Oh, my goodness. On the air since 1977, it's the Steve Kane Show with Brian. All right, welcome back. I'm Brian. Steve Kane is here. 
our number one AAA Go Came One. You know, the other day I had to get new tires on my car at Friendly Tire in Margate. You know, um, in the last month, I've had to buy uh, four new tires for my car, my wife's car, and then I got new tires for my daughter's car before she headed off to California. And it used to be that I would not buy tires until the treads were showing and I was unsafe on the highways because tires are so expensive. And then I found Friendly Tire long before they were advertising here on the show. They have the lowest prices on new tires you will find anywhere. And um, I had been a customer at Friendly Tire. I had a Jeep Wrangler four wheel drive years ago and uh, it was great until I needed to buy those big old four wheel drive tires. And I mean, I was like, oh my goodness. You know, I couldn't, no wonder I got such a good deal on the Jeep. And, and I found Friendly Tire and found tires that were affordable. And I'd been telling you, Steve, for years, every time you would get tires, you would tell me, oh, I got tires yesterday. And I would say, next time, go to Friendly Tire. He has the lowest prices on new tires you'll find anywhere. And finally, I caught you before you bought new tires. And you didn't even believe me. You're like, I don't know. You know, there's no way the tires are that, that cheap over there. New tires, there's no way. And you went over there and you called me like a half hour later and you said, Brian, you were right. I cannot believe. Listen, no matter uh, what kind of tires you need, Mike at Friendly Tire will get them for you. And the pro when you call, I'm going to give you the number in just a moment. When you call Mike at Friendly Tire and he gives you a quote over the phone, that price is out the door and on the road because uh, Friendly Mike at Friendly Tire does not ch charge you to balance the tire, mount the tire, or dispose of your old tires. The price he gives you is out the door and on the road. No added charges to that price he quotes you on the phone. All right, I'm going to give you the number. And he'll give you a quote right over the phone. And we, you know, we have listeners that drive over an hour each way. Uh, he has a, uh, thousands of, of good used tires in stock as well. 954-977-9445. 954-977-9445. That's 954-977-9445 for Friendly Tire in Margate, make sure you tell him you heard about him on the radio. Okay, now there's one topic that you and I don't talk about too much because you, you get ticked off about it, but Ukraine, you know, um, you know, we, we don't talk about Ukraine. I, I'll, I usually talk about Ukraine before you join us, and then, you know, because you get too touchy over it. But Biden went there with uh, an open checkbook to the U.S. Treasury. He's in Ukraine right now. Um, and he's going to give another 500 billion, half a trillion dollars to Zelensky. You must be excited, Steve. Uh, I get upset when you say dumb things like that on the radio. Well, I, giving 500 billion to Ukraine is pretty dumb. I know. It's not dumb, but guys, uh, call in and talk to Steve. I'm in the mood to discuss that. Well, that's the big story in the news. I mean, you know, I, I put it off as long as I can. Oh, it's the big one. It's the big one. It's the big one. You know, the, 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 what, the thing about this trip. The, uh, the you, Russians. The, well, to the, mm -hmm. the uh, Russian communists. And yeah. Not only send our uh, yeah, can send our boys over there to get mm -hmm. yeah. Well, well, there, here's a here's a couple things. Here's a, here's a couple of things. Okay, about this trip that Biden's making that I'm very suspicious about. Okay, one of them is all the he landed in Kiev. All the reports say that air raid sirens were going off while Biden was on the ground in Ukraine. I don't think there was an air raid. I think Zelensky turned the air raid sirens on to create the uh, to create drama around Biden's visit. That doesn't make sense. First off, Putin uh, it, it was around noontime, okay? Who would launch an air raid in the middle of the day while the president of the United States is on the ground? That just doesn't even make sense. OK, so that was all for show, the air raid uh, sirens. And and I've noticed I was listening to th this story broke while I was driving into the radio station this morning. OK, so and I was listening to the television reporters in Kiev reporting and all of them were talking about how they found out they were in their hotel rooms 
in Kiev, and then they they were locked in, and their internet was cut off. I and I and this just occurred. By the way, call us on hold. Stand by. There's one opening on the board. Let me just finish my thought. And I was one. I, I was wondering why do we not see embedded reporters with combat units on the front lines in Ukraine? And and I and I'm starting to think that there's really not a major war going on between Ukraine and Russia. I'm not saying there's not any fighting, but I think it's probably some mild skirmishes at this point. And we don't see any frontline combat operations, Steve. I find that odd. Because reporters, they love that visual. And, they, and, and reporters, these, these wartime reporters love to be embedded with soldiers in combat zones. But your theory. that there's not really much of a war going on. Some border skirmishes is about it. That it and and there's there's no threat. They faked the air raid this morning. There was no air raid. It was a fake air raid. First off, if there was an air raid, they would have gotten the president of the United States on Air Force One and flown him out of the zone. Okay, that uh, Zelensky just turned the air raid siren on. There was no air. There was no air raid taking place, which tells you everything you need to know about these people. You, you, you think you think the Secret Service would have let the president of the United States stay on the ground? After an air raid took place, I don't think so. I think that was just to add drama to make us think there's some major combat operations going on when really it's not going on. As with any war, I'm sure there's some psychops involved. That would that was propaganda for the American people, and it was also uh, probably done in cooperation with the White House to make Biden look tough. That even though there's an air raid going on, I'm there. He's like Lieutenant Dan during the hurricane. All right, listen, we'll take our break for the bottom of the hour. If you're on hold, stand by. We'll go to the phones after the break. There's one opening at one triple eight go Kane one You're welcome to call in about any of the topics we brought up today. I brought up a lot of stuff. Our number toll-free, one triple eight go Kane one triple eight four six five twenty six thirty one. It's a toll-free call no matter where you're calling from. I'm Brian Craig. Steve Kane is here. This is the Steve Kane Show, Florida's longest running radio show. We'll be right back after this. Making morning radio great again. It's the Steve Kane Show with Brian Craig. Oh, let me let me check these calls. I don't usually screen calls, but maybe Ann Coulter called in, right? Steve Kane Show. Steve Kane Show. Hold on. Steve Kane Show. Hold on. No, no Ann Coulter. You never know. How many miles of wall did Trump build? Because I, I've at 450 something is in my mind. Am I wrong about that? That just pops in my mind. Steve Kane show. Hold on. No, not Ann Coulter. Not Ann Coulter. It was over 450, yeah. Let me look. Four hundred fifty-eight miles. Four hundred fifty-eight miles. Steve Kane show. Hold on. No, not Ann Coulter. Oh boy. I'm reading in U.S. News and World Reports, which hates Trump. They say. Before Biden stopped new construction on the wall, Trump had built 458 miles. Mm Mm-hmm. 
So, so far, the new mic is, is awesome. Got a half an hour to go. If, it, if the battery lasts, the last half hour, we're golden. I'm curious to see how, if it's uh, drained the battery on my iPhone. But if you, hey, Dan, if you look earlier at the beginning of the video, I was, wa I walked, I can leave the phone here that I'm streaming on. I can walk all over the building. And you can hear me no matter where I am. I got some time. I'll walk out in the hallway again. Like I'm walking out of the studio. I am walking down the hallway. And I'm going to walk out into the lobby. See if you guys can still hear me. All right. I am in the lobby of the radio station right now. So when I get back, you'll have to let me know if you can hear me in the lobby. All right. I'm walking back now. All right. Let's see. Coming back to the studio. Like I said, I just got to remember to take this off when I go to the men's room and I'll be okay. Let's see. All right. Could you hear me when I was in the lobby? When I said I'm in the lobby, could you hear that? Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, I know. $30, including shipping for this thing. Wow. Well, like I said, I wanted to get the Rode mic, but it's $300. And I'm like, I don't know about that. $300, I don't know if it will even work. So this here is like a no-name brand. It's the, it, it's the number one seller on Amazon, and it was $30. I'll tell you the brand. Hold on. It's called May Besta. Never even heard. M-A-Y-B-E-S-T-A. I'll know if you talk about it last week. Did you hear about the, uh, the, the plastic... Uh... The, from uh, factory or fields in Florida and Kissimmee. Kissimmee? That, yeah. It's, mm -mm. That it, it's causing hazardous stuff. And Kissimmee, there. I'll look it up. Plastic, I'll look it up. Yeah, they're saying that the air is actually bad there right now. So it's, I'll it's look it up. becoming a big story. <laughs> Kissimmee? Kissimmee, Florida. Right down there, too. <laughs> I think the $30 mic's better. It's just, how much better can the $300 one be? Oh, yeah. Kissimmee's right outside Disney World. Oh, my goodness. Plastic pots caught, caught fire. Oh, I'm sure it's made in China. It, it had good reviews. And I'm like, well, let me try the $30 one. But we're not through yet. I got to see if it lasts for three hours, the charge. $30. It's called May Besta. M-A-Y-B-E-S-T-A. -E see, the other one that I've been using... And I've been vlogging with, I have another one of these at home that I vlog with. And I, it's a wired mic. I've been having problems with Oh, we're coming back. All right, we are back. I'm Brian. It's the Steve Kane Show. Steve, you with us? Okay, every line on the board is lit. And uh, we'll go, yep. Yeah. Ukraine. Policy. The one thing he got right, the one thing, the only thing he got right was to think about the war. That we had to draw the line somewhere because if we didn't, these, these communists in Russia are not going to. They're not communists anymore, Steve. They're just, it's like a dictatorship, I guess, maybe. basis do you say that? Well, it's not the same Russia that it used to be. All right. But so what? So what? The, the communists took over South Vietnam. How's that affected our life? It, it completely 
could be worse if I Carl, 458 walls, uh, miles of wall built without any help from Ryan and McConnell. Trump had to move money around. And that's right. See, what I'm telling you is, is I don't know. I don't I don't agree with the question. That's a bizarre question. I, I, I think the war is is fake. I think the war is fake. They put on they put on the air raid sirens. Right. No, in the middle of the day, Putin's going to conduct an air raid in the middle of the day while the president of the United States is on the ground. That's not even believable. But the press are running it. All right. I know. I know. I know. It's the big story today. I, I mean, I, you know. good morning. You're on. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Oh, we've interrupted a conversation. Let's listen in. Yes, you're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Irene from Boca. Hey, Irene. You know what this reminds Hi, how are you? Uh, this reminds me of Hillary going to Czechoslovakia when the war was starting. Ba Bosnia. Bosnia. Bos she went to Bosnia. Yeah, that's right. Wasn't she in the middle of fire also? She cl Hillary Clinton claimed, and I think Chelsea was with her, the first lady and the first daughter fly into Bosnia and they take enemy fire. Yeah, she. I think, yeah. Yeah. You know, this is, he can, he plagiarizes everything. Why not plagiarize this script too? Yeah, the, the air raid sirens. Oh my God. I had, for, had to use the dump button on an elderly lady. Yeah, I, I agree with what she said, but uh, oh my goodness. <laughs> oh my goodness. If you're on hold, stand by. Uh, she said he's a P. You can fill in the blank. Oh my goodness. Oh. Biden got right. But everything, every decision he makes is terrible. And the one thing he got right is drawing the line on, on, on that. All right. Steve. The credit. Just because it's Joe Biden. Steve, you, you don't, do you think that the air raid sirens were fake today? I don't know. They were real sirens, but was there really an air raid? That was a wag the dog air raid siren. If there was a real air raid, they would have gotten Biden out of the country. Oops, sorry. I unplugged my I, I, my... I was so upset, Steve, I flipped my arm and ripped the wires out of the board. So if there, if there, was, a, if there was a real air raid, they would have flown Biden out of the country immediately. Okay? The air raid sirens were put on to make it's just like the other day they had uh, Biden's yeah. psychological uh, aspect to every any war. Well, that to the American people, that, 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 come on, that was for our benefit. They, they, who was so? Who was behind that? Zelensky, Biden, both. Steve, come on, come on. We don't need psychological warfare against our our own people. They, it's like the other day, Biden took his health exam and the doctor came out and said he's in perfect physical and condition and everything. Come on. You know, and the, uh, let's take some more calls, though. OK, let's go. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? PJ from Brown. Hey, PJ. Hey, uh, you know, the thing is, what really upsets me about this Ukraine war. It's like, you know, there's one similarity to World War One, both of them. Both easily, easily avoidable wars. There was absolutely just like because I read a lot about you know when I even when I was a teenager, I was reading. Well, well, let's let's stick to the new. Let's stick to the current war. I'm not not. No, no, no. Here's the thing. Yeah, here's the thing. All all that before the Russians even entered Ukraine, all all that had to happen was NATO and Ukraine both, and the United States say definitely. No NATO for Ukraine. There will be no no NATO membership for Ukraine, and they won't be. And maybe even throw in about the uh, European Union. But main the main thing was NATO. If they if they just declared no no NATO for Ukraine, th th there wouldn't have been. Uh, I don't think the Russians you know would have given. And and you know what PJ and, and you know what PJ. It's not just okay. But we've given them over a trillion dollars. Uh, Biden's pledged another half a trillion. The other, the NATO countries have been giving them billions of dollars too. The Germans gave over five billion. 
I mean, where's all this money going? You know, Kiev doesn't look like it's war torn to me. Yeah. And, you know, uh, by the way, DJ, DJ, what would happen yeah. if today Biden got up in front of the mic and said, well, the United States is washing its hands of this, this war, and we're pulling all the U.S. support away, and, you know, you, you're, on your, you're on their own. What would happen? You think the, the Soviets would uh, not push it any further? They'd say, oh, well, let's not. Uh, they yes. Fine, let's leave. Yes. Yeah, because you would give them something. You would give them. No, here's the thing. The main thing was, well, the main thing, the main issue was Ukraine becoming a look, look at the map. It was like it was like NATO going like a thousand miles further east or how many miles, you know, Ukraine. Mm hmm. That was a fight. Yeah, look at what. Let me ask PJ one question. What do you, What do you think about the air raid sirens? Was there really an air raid, or does, did Zelensky just turn the siren on? No, they're on so that when Biden comes back, he can start bragging about how he was in an air raid. Exactly. All right, PJ. Take Take care, PJ. PJ's right on the money this time. Oh my goodness. All right. All right. Let's take another call. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Yeah, this is Richie. Steve, I'm I'm very disappointed that you can't see the shadow for, for the trees. I, I I can't believe you. It just hasn't. You don't. First of all, Fox News just reported that Biden in advance let him know he was going there. So Russia wasn't going to do nothing. This was a setup. Secondly, secondly, you keep asking the same question. What if we just backed out right now? That's not the that's not the scenario. The scenario is the United States should be a peace broker, which they're not. All he's doing is draining our money at a, to a war that we, that the Ukrainians could never win because they're outnumbered. They can never win the war. Russia will never quit. So all you're going to see is more dead people. That's all you're going to see. Yeah, and Russia's and, and Russia's Russia has them on two borders. They're at their south because they got Crimea. Russia hasn't even really gone after them. This is this is so fake. They can't. <laughs> You and listen, I was in Vietnam. False reporting in Vietnam. There's false reporting that the, that the Ukrainians are beating them. They're not beating them. This is this is a stalemate, and and people are dying. See? And 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 you know what? And you know what? And you know what? Uh, they have not even had peace talks, a summit meeting with the Russians. Why, why hasn't the United States demanded peace talks? Because the the, the yeah. Doing is making money over there. Well, not we. Biden's making money. Biden's making money. Yeah. You don't see that, Steve? That this thing is going on and, and it's the same position. We're in the same spot right now with what that people? No, I don't see, see it that way. Mm. See it that way. What don't you see? How long, how many dead people are you going to count before you decide that nothing, that this is a stalemate? It can't be won. It can't be won by Ukraine. Well, let, 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 let me tell you, you know, let me tell you this. If, if we withdrew our support, uh, from we shouldn't do that. We should demand peace talks. Yeah. We don't stand. I'm not talking about walk away. Demand peace talks. All right, listen, Richie. We gotta we gotta run for a break. But thanks thanks for the call. Yeah, Richie makes I you know it's the way it is. You know, well, it's the uh, Steve. I I had believe me if it was not the lead story in the news today. Steve and I have an agreement not to talk about Ukraine with one another. It's like the days of the Vietnam War, and it's almost like the Civil War, where brother against brother, you know, <laughs> you know, one brother's blue, the other one's gray. Steve and I are like that with Ukraine, so we don't talk about Ukraine, but we're forced into it today because Biden went over there with the with the checkbook. All right, listen, we're going to take our last break of the morning. It's the Steve Kane Show. I'm Brian. Back after this. The cold, six, hard, six, truth. All right, and it's time for the first Gold and Precious Metals Report of the Week, live from the offices of William Youngerman Incorporated in Boca. William Youngerman. William Youngerman, how are the metals starting the week off? Well, the markets are mostly closed today. The world market is open, of course, but the, uh, uh, the trading is going to be very light today. Uh, gold closed out the week up six dollars and twenty cents last week. Uh, closing gold at uh, eighteen hundred forty-two dollars and twenty cents. That's pretty close to where we're trading right now. Silver closed out the week at twenty-one dollars and seventy-one cents, which was up sixteen cents. Platinum was down a dollar on Friday, closing at nine twenty. And 
palladium was down seven dollars at fourteen hundred and thirty two dollars uh this morning gold trading rate around uh eighteen forty five twenty right now that's uh, up three dollars silver up nine cents at twenty one dollars and eighty cents platinum up twenty dollars at nine hundred and forty dollars so the markets are very going to be very thinly traded today because of the the, the comex the, the u.s markets are cold mm -hmm. now for the day, but call if you have something to do, and we can uh, try to uh, get you in on an appointment. Uh, uh, but um, we will be mostly closed. All right. So if you if you have if you have any business you need to do, call ahead and see if you can uh, get an appointment with William Youngman. But you'll be back tomorrow and the rest of the week, uh, normal operating hours, I'm sure. All right. Um, if you want to give him a call, one 327 5010 1-800-327-5010 online, williamyoungerman.com. And of course, William Youngerman located at 150 East Palmetto Park Road on the first floor of the Bank of America building, just east of US-1 Federal Highway on the south side of Palmetto. But remember, close today, unless you call and make an appointment, open Tuesday and the rest of the week, normal hours. All right, William Youngerman, we'll touch base tomorrow. All right, back after this. Is Warriors for breakfast. Now the Steve King Show is on the air. All right, callers on hold, stand by. I want to tell people how they can get their free doorbell camera from Slowman's. That's by calling them and tell them you heard about them on the radio. I'm going to give you the number in a moment. You know, the doorbell camera from Slowman's is amazing. You know, there's a motion sensor. You get alerts whenever there is activity at your front door, even if they don't press the doorbell. And I love that. I get those notifications all the time, and they're wonderful. It was great when we were out of the country on our cruise a couple weeks ago, and there was uh, someone uh, at my front door I knew. And uh, it made me feel safe and secure knowing that my family is safe at home because I can monitor what's going on. There's night vision on that camera that's in high definition as well on the doorbell camera. So uh, that's an awesome thing. And there's two-way audio. Through the app on your mobile device, you can have a conversation with whoever is at your door, no matter where you are, no matter where you're located. You don't have to be home. They don't know you're home. They don't know you're not home. You can still talk to them. It's really amazing. Give them a call. Here's the number. Uh, tell them you heard about them on the radio. They'll tell you how you can get your free doorbell camera. 833-283-5050. 833-283-5050. Two eight three five zero five zero. That's eight three three two eight three fifty fifty. All right. Every line on the board is lit. Um, Ann Coulter may be one of the calls. Uh, she was trashing Trump to Tim Pool, and maybe she's calling to defend her honor. Good morning. You're on the radio. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Good morning. Tom from Florida. Nope, not Ann Coulter. All right, Tom. What's up? Not too much, buddy. You guys are talking about Ukraine again, and once again. You and Steve have two polarized different issues. I mean, Steve seems to have a last on reality and what stopping Putin and, and doing everything is good for the world. Closed-minded individuals, some of them on the right, mm. are actually patting this dictator on the back and saying, good job. Mm. What? Trump is one of them. So, you know, I don't understand where, you know, helping... Uh, Another country before. Oh, yeah. Maniac. I'm so glad you called, Tom. I'm so glad you called because no, no. I, you know why? You know why I'm glad you called, Tom. You just made some breaking news I've not heard before, and maybe we'll we'll get national coverage over this. You said that President Trump patted Putin on the back and congratulated him for the good job of the invasion of Ukraine. Where did that, where's that at? I missed that. You, hey, no, I don't Google it. In the beginning, hold on. In the beginning, yeah, when this said it. happened, yeah. called Putin a genius for making... No, no, no. He did not say... he. Where I'm, I want the part where he... I want the... That's not what you said. I want the part where he patted him on the back and congratulated him for invading Ukraine. That's what you said. That's the news. So... So hold on, you ready to finish? You're talking semantics. I'm talking about it no. saying something, and you're actually okay. So you made that up. So you made that okay. So that was a lie. That was th so you lied. You lied. He, when did he congratulate Putin for invading Ukraine? Where can I find that? Well, 
Look it up. Look it up. Yeah, Google it. I got you. He never he never said that. I know. I know, Brian. I know. You'll, I know. You'll go to the firing squad for Trump. No matter what, you'll be there. Well, I, I certainly won't make things up and lie like you did. And you, and I think you should be committed. Okay? No. Committed. You lied. You lied. So you're an admitted liar now? Do you admit that you lied? Okay, you ready for this? Do you admit that no matter what is said, even if it's wrong or right? That, that, that is not an answer. That's a question. Now, well, you're a fanatic with the man. So no matter yeah, but you're, you're a liar. He never congratulated Putin for invading Ukraine. Yes. Steve. He called what? him a genius for his move. However semantics you want to put it. That's not congratulations for invading Ukraine. Oh, man. Brian, you, I, you, I give you this. You have a PhD in twisting and starting arguments. You're good, pal. You're good. But it's also, you know, not not the right thing to do to speculate and, you know, all the, you know, it, it, it's not a good thing. So, Steve, what's your opinion? So tell me, so tell me, caller, tell me what uh, if, excuse me, if if Ukraine became part of Russia today and no longer existed, how would that affect our life? Oh, my God, Brian, you just don't see it, do you? I'm asking. I'm asking you to help me see it. Steve, no, I'm asking the caller, Steve. Don't get this guy off the hook. He's dangling here. He's twisted in the wind. If you took a plane, if you took a plane over to Kiev and you saw all the destruction happening on people dying, babies, I guarantee. Listen, I watch. I watch Pavlo. There's a okay. I watch Pavlo in Ukraine on YouTube. He's 25 years old in Ukraine, and all he does is go on vacations and go to the park and ride his bike. I don't see much devastation going on in Pablo and Ukraine's videos. Oh, there's some, there, there's, there's, yeah, he, there's no bombing. Go to pop, go on YouTube and look up Pablo in Ukraine. Oh, okay. You know, tell me, tell me, tell me four countries that border Ukraine. What countries border Ukraine? You ready for this? Brian, I am not talking about what borders you... So you don't even know where it is on the map. You don't even know where it is on the map, and you want to go to war over it. Hey, Brian, you change subjects like it's, like, like it's your... No, this is all the same subject. We're, we're on the same topic that you don't know what you're talking about. It's all the same topic. Steve, yes. Steve, what? Before this, Brian interrupts you... Here's the lifeline, Steve. I'd like to get your opinion... <laughs> My opinion is that uh, Putin is an expansionist and that as much as yeah. he thinks he can get away with, he'll continue to expand until he hits opposition. To hey, caller, I got, I got another caller for you. Caller, I got another call, a question for you, caller. Other than hot women, what does Ukraine export? Wow. Uh, sunflower seeds? Nothing. Nothing. Wait, so what is the bread basket of the... Of what? Of America? We're the bread basket. We're the bread basket. For 25% of... Okay. Here, sunflowers. Oh, my good. We have... Oh, my goodness. All right, hippie. Listen, let, let, let me tell you. This is... They have two... Listen, Ukraine has two major exports. The first is hot women. And the second is payoffs to Joe Biden. That's the, they're, those are their two big exports. Brian, that's so, I'm just letting you know that. Do you see how you do things? I mean, you will literally say to somebody else, oh, I can't believe they just made that comment. But you just did. You're saying that a war-torn country, the only good thing that... War-torn. And, you know... I didn't say the only good thing. I said those are their two exports. Guess what? Steve and you... Steve is an individual with a mind class that they're fading. They see the bigger picture. Trump loyalists and people like you are closed-minded and only see what Donald Trump wants you to see. Okay? Yeah. Well, okay. All right. Well, I'm wearing my MAGA hat right now. And, uh, of course, uh, and, of, and of course, 
right now because I will be calling back. I will bet you now, from whatever it is, we'll figure something out over the next call or two. I will bet you that Donald Trump will not be president. Well, I'm not going to bet. I, first off, I don't I don't bet with anybody. OK, Steve will tell you, I don't make any bets, especially with known liars. And you're an admitted liar. You made that thing up. You made that up. You made that up. Known procrastinist who spits out opinion more than fact. And you still don't know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. All right. You want me to give you an example? Yeah, go ahead. Hey, sure. The other day, uh, Brian's talking about uh, how come they didn't shoot down the uh, the air balloon over over country. Nothing would have gotten hit. Nothing would have gotten hit. So finally, they they shoot something over ground, and then now a missile is missing. I mean, Brian, you that's true. That's true. General Milley, General Milley said, General Milley, General Milley, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, okay, who, who went to college with Rachel Levine, okay, you know what that is, um, said that the first missile missed over Lake Huron and is missing. General Milley said that. But you're very lucky because we're at the end of the show. Good, but thanks for calling. We'll talk again soon. He's very hysterical, almost like a woman. Great caller, but hysterical like a woman. Um, now, I want to tell you guys, um, yeah. Lamont. Yeah. <laughs> Don Lamont. Don Lamont. Oh, man. Now, I want to, if you're on hold, stand by. I want to tell people real quick, though, about the MyPillow 2.0. Steve, you and Lori got to get the MyPillow 2.0. It's, it, it, Mike Lindell has done what, I thought couldn't be done. He's improved on perfection. He's taken the my pillow that started it all and he's improved it. It's got that same patented fill inside, but cooling technology so that your face and your head don't get warm at night. When your head and face get warm and you flip the pillow, you wake up, even if you don't remember it and you've interrupted your night's sleep. It will change your life. My wife and I have been sleeping on our my pillow 2.0s for a week and a half now. We've taken the other my pillows and made them guest pillows. Uh, this MyPillow 2.0 will change your life. Mike from Louisiana called me up in the first hour. He just got his over the weekend, and he loves his MyPillow 2.0. They're buy one, get one free right now with our promo code Kane at checkout, K-A-N-E. But this BOGO offer will not last long. These MyPillow 2.0s are selling in huge numbers. When they run low on inventory, the BOGO offer will disappear without notice. Buy one, get one free, the MyPillow 2.0 with cooling technology when you use our promo code Kane, K-A-N-E, at checkout at MyPillow.com. You can also order by phone toll-free, 1-800-716-4879. 1-800-716-4879, promo code Kane, K-A-N-E. You're on the radio. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Yes, uh, good morning. My name is Faith, and I'm calling from Michigan. Hey. Have they found that missing missile that went down over Michigan yet? Well, that is one of the things that I know so about. Yeah, I, I would be too. Well, the truth is truth about everything. One, <clears throat> I, I do live near a, a few hours from there, and it's pretty close to home. Um, it's quite upsetting, and they tried making it sound like, oh, is this nothing? Look at here. Was this, um, is it is it snowing? Is it snowing up in Michigan now? I'm in Florida, so I haven't been outside yet, but I don't think it's snow. Is there snow on the ground? I mean, could the missile be covered in snow? Could it be found by kids after the thaw? What, what... I'm not. You know, this is another thing. It's a safety concern. They've done nothing to try to recover it. Mm. I'm sure Governor Whitmer is all over it. Well, they tried to de-escalate this. I, I really, the Biden in, administration, I just, they upset me deeply. Ha have you heard anything about a military operation looking for the lost uh, missile that landed somewhere over Michigan? No, absolutely. Wow. On that note, we're out of time. Listen, there's only one opening on the board. If you're on hold, we're out of time for today. We'll be back tomorrow at 6 a.m. If you want to. Hang on until tomorrow. You'll be first in line. I promise you, those of you on hold right now, or you can call back tomorrow at 6 a.m. 
I'm Brian. Steve Kane is here. Everyone on the board is lit now. I, you guys can hold on. We'll be back tomorrow, I promise. Everyone have a great day. I'm Brian Craig. This is the Steve Kane Show. Steve Kane, of course, has been here. God bless America. And of course, we want to wish a very happy President's Day to the greatest president ever, Donald Trump. Happy birthday, President Trump. We'll see you tomorrow morning, 6 a.m. Hey, guys, I got to run. Make sure you like the video before you go. And I think the wireless mic has done pretty good.